three races in, and the intensity is picking up. The gruel and grind of the season is taking form. And at the base of Rattlesnake Hill, the 21 car threatens to strike yet again. Austin Hill is there. He wins a thriller. The drivers have two options, adapt and overcome, you know what to do here. or melt away. He is in trouble. Can he pass him in a turn two? Here in the Valley of the Sun, seasons crash and burn. Expectations get blurry. Hang on, hang on, hang on. All the way, all the way, all the way. This is the desert. This ought to get pretty wild here. It's going to be really aggressive. And if you want to be branded as a champion, Three. you need to handle the heat. One. And nothing cools the heat like a champagne shower on Victory Lane. So later tonight, most of the country will spring forward, but today is all about staying in the moment. And of course, that moment is all about this one mile Phoenix racetrack. So in eight months, we're gonna be back here crowning a champion and a win here today could set you up to do just that. As we say hello and we say welcome to race day on FS1. It is a beautiful day out there in Phoenix. It's always beautiful inside the studio. I'm Shannon Spake. As always, he's America's crew chief, Larry McReynolds, the Daytona 500 champ, Jamie McMurray. Larry, I say Phoenix and you say what? I say we are out in the desert. I cannot believe this is the fourth race of 2023, the third race of the West Coast Swing, and the tracks just keep getting smaller. Two and a half, <laughs> yeah. two, mile and a half. Now we're to a one-mile racetrack, and not only is this a shorter racetrack, it is a shorter race, only 200 laps, so you have to be mistake-free, and you better have both hands up on that steering wheel when they wave that green flag. Speaking well, of getting smaller, yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just we are not friends. I didn't put her up to that. I did not put her up to that. That is so wrong. I don't even know what it to say really right funny, now. Though. Don't like Shannon. Uh, yeah. Speaking of people getting up on the wheel, I had some opening comments, but when I saw that Kyle Busch had to go to the back, a guy that we know is really good here, and he's taller than me, Shannon. I'm not sure if you're aware of that, but he'll probably be running well today. Let's head into the garage. <laughs> you love it. Let's head into the garage where we find Josh Sims, who'll be working the pits today. As always, working the latest stories. Hi, Josh. Yeah, and the latest story involves the all-time wins leader in the Xfinity series and Kyle Busch back in the field for the second week in a row and this is a guy that has a whopping 11 wins in this series alone here out in the desert but if he's going to get to number 12 he's got his work cut out for him they had some issues during practice elected not to qualify they had to change out the fuel regulators so now he's going to start from the back of the field so Kyle Busch got some work cut out for him but this is a guy we know what he's seen what he can do in the past now it's a matter of seeing what he can do today coming up later we're going to catch up with Kyle to see how this affects his chances, plus another guy that has to start from the back of the field and Parker Kligerman to get the latest on his car, as well as catch up with Justin Allgaier, who's going to start on the front row, Shannon. Thank you so much, Josh. Have fun out there today. So qualifying was earlier. Here's a start at the top 12 qualifiers. You got Cole Custer on the pole alongside two times Phoenix winner Justin Allgaier. And Larry, you like Cole Custer, don't you? Yeah, I mean, this is Cole's third front row start at Phoenix, and he has a second place finish there a few years ago back in 2019. Yeah, you see row four here. We got last week's winner, Austin Hill, and then Josh Berry, uh, top five, both at Vegas. Anna Fontana going for a third top five here this today. It'll be interesting to see where the winner comes from for sure and of course the last three weeks as you know we've been west coast racing first it was a two mile track in fontana california john hunter dimbachek kicked off the west coast swing with a win there last week austin hill won at the 1.5 mile track his second win of the season and today it's phoenix it's one mile so we might see a repeat winner or maybe a new winner before heading back east. And of course, Larry, the West Coast swing has been pretty balanced so far. Well, it is, and it's early, but I've seen no trend or no pattern. Two different winners, two different organizations, two different manufacturers. But we say this in Cup and Xfinity. When we get through the West Coast swing because of this diverse set of racetracks, it gives us a little clearer picture about who's strong, who's in trouble, who needs to do some work. But you think about two of those tracks, these teams are going to come back to them in the playoffs, especially here at Phoenix where they're going to settle a championship. Uh, from a driver team's perspective, that little airplane that kept going back and forth, they're thankful that it's not going to be going back and forth next weekend. It's very exhausting for, for everybody to have to do all of the travel. And I see the, the West Coast swing a little bit different than Larry in that I think he kind of got three players here. Justin Allgaier, Austin Hill, um, and who else I have? Oh, 
Uh, John Henry Machak, what did you do? My height is still challenging me in my, in my thoughts here, Shannon. <laughs> yeah, I think you have three guys that are kind of sticking out above the rest yeah. and, and look like they're championship contenders. Yeah. But then you have other drivers like Brandon Jones, who's at Junior Motorsports his first year. He, he, he's still got a little bit of a hole. You've got to put the shovel down. You've got to quit digging. Sheldon Creed needs to start performing like his teammate Austin Hills performed. Mm -hmm. And what about Justin Allgaier, right? He's really good at Phoenix. We started off the season talking yeah. about him as he's the veteran, so see if he can get it done out there today. It, you know what's getting it done is Mother Nature. It's 75 degrees, beautiful day out there, 2% chance of rain. We do love that and 12 mile an hour uh, winds. Of course, it's usually hot in the desert, so we figured we'd do a little heat check. How about that? You see cool, warm, hot, and what is the other one, Jamie Mack? Uh, boiling. Boiling. Hot, Shannon, yeah. So cool is cold, obviously not very good. Warm is meh. <laughs> meh, meh, warm, uh, hot, and then boiling. So uh, let's going to start with, uh, I've got the wrong paper. Now you're rubbing off on oh, me. Oh, Jamie's going to kick us off with an easy one. Austin Hill, I turned too quickly. Yeah. You know? Well, I'm yeah. going to go ahead and test the meter out and send it to boiling hot. Uh, no one has started the season any stronger. Being able to win at Daytona, and then that incredible win that, that he got uh, last weekend at Las Vegas. Austin Hill is having an amazing season. We kind of put him as the, the super speedway guy for a while, but he's shown now that yeah. he can win on mile and a half type it's tracks. It's like a in there, isn't it? We're going to talk it's to him red. a little bit later in the show. Larry, the newest driver from JRM, you just talked about him, Brandon Jones. Where is he on the heat check? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to go with Cool. A best finish of 14th at Daytona so far. Still looking for his very first top 10. And you look at qualified 21st, obviously it's not started off any better. He has not even led a single lap. But maybe Phoenix is a place we can get that temperature up, Brandon, because he has a win here. If you go back to this race a year ago, he finished second to the nine car that he's driving this year. Any nerves that he might start to, start to push it a little bit because of the way that the season's gone so I don't, far? I don't think so. He sees his teammates yeah. that's over there, how well mm -hmm. they're doing. They just need to get things under him and, and get back on track. All right, Jamie Mack, uh, Daniel Hemrick obviously won the championship right here two seasons ago. Where is he on our Yeah, I'm going to put him at, is it meh? Meh? At the warm Meh. section uh, of our meter. <laughs> it's been a tough start to the season for, for Daniel Hemrick. Uh, obviously, Daytona didn't start off. But the last two weeks, he's been 12th and 10th at Vegas and Fontana. Getting a little bit better each week. And you mentioned it, Shannon. He's won here before. was able to win the championship in dramatic fashion, uh, passing Austin Sendrick on the last lap in the last corner. And if you think about it, I'm hoping that he's off those crutches this week. He had that the workout incident. We saw him on pit road. So hopefully he can get healed up and get better. Left leg? Was it left leg? I, I don't think know. It was yeah. a leg, Shannon. Uh, it was a leg. Larry, the newcomer to the series, John Hunter Nemechek. Newish, right? Newish, ish, ish. Newish, but hottish. Yes, I would hot definitely say that. You look at John Hunter Nemechek, his worst finish is six at Las Vegas. He won at Fontana, a very close second at Daytona. And so he has just really got it started off to a very hot start. And you think about five starts at Phoenix, five top tens, including fifth a year ago. So he could keep this hot streak alive. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it could certainly. I mean, does he need to get it going as well? Does he need to continue that hot streak? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Every just, does. You, you better believe it. You want to leave the West Coast swing and head back to Atlanta next week on the upstroke. I know that we know we'll kind of figure out where teams are. Do you think we will figure out who our top contenders are after this West Coast swing? Well, yeah, I mean, that's, that's why I said earlier. I, I mean, I feel like the Austin Hill, uh, Al Geyer, and John Hernimichek are kind of the three that have stuck out. They're not you know, way ahead of everybody else, but it just seems like each week those are the three contending for a win. Our pole po sitter, Cole, Cole Custer. Custer, needs to get things ramped up a little bit. Today could be the day. How about this? Coming up, uh, can Austin Hill win two in a row and be the king of the West Coast swing? He is going to join us. Came out of that hot box room uh, with Boiling with a capital G, as Jamie mentioned. Uh, plus, Justin Allgaier is going to visit with Josh Sims. Is Phoenix win number three in the cards for Allgaier? We're going to find that out. Plus, Jamie and Larry are going to break down what makes this one mile track so unique. You guys ready for that? Ready. All right, let's, let's do, do it. it. It's race day. We'll be right back. All right, so today the Xfinity Series wraps up the West Coast Swing. It is all about the Phoenix track. One mile certainly has its fair share of quirks and challenges. We're going to break down some of those. There it is, our track map, courtesy of our friends at iRacing. Jamie Mack, Larry McReynolds. Jamie, going to start. What, what makes uh, this place unique? What stands out to you? Yeah, I mean, it's so hard to talk about Phoenix and not acknowledge the dogleg on the backstretch. Uh, the, the restarts here obviously are chaotic. We talk about getting four or five wide. There's really no out of bounds. You see these guys 
his cut down across that. You want to get as tight to that inside wall as you can to make the distance as short as you possibly can. But then when you get out here to turn one, you have to merge back up onto the racetrack. Without a doubt, at some point today, somebody is going to misjudge that and get into a car, cause a wreck. It's one of the best parts of watching Phoenix to see how crazy the restarts get. Just all kind of crazy craziness also on pit road there, crew chief. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt. Pit road can be a difference maker in Phoenix. It's a very long pit road. You enter pit road all the way over there in turn two, and you exit just past the start finish line. Now, I don't know in this shorter race that we're going to see green flag pit stops, but if we do, that apron gets very, very slick, and you're trying to get down to 45 miles per hour. I talked about the length of this pit road. It has a curve down there in the turn three and four area, and you look back at last year, we had 12 combined pit road speeding penalties. We had eight in the spring. In fact, Sam Mayer had four pit road speeding penalties in this race one year ago, Oof. and it seems like the second section entered. It's a very short section. That seems where a lot of drivers get busted for speeding. Yeah, and he mentioned when you get down to turn three and four it is curved and if you're it, depending on where you're pitted at you can cheat your pit road speed quite a bit if you're in the outside lane versus being all the way on the bottom and it's it's, it's kind of a gray gray area inside the car you don't really know how much you can until you get busted and because of this being a shorter race and, and knowing you're not getting a lot of pit stops you got to get everything you can on pit road okay resin is something that we heard coming into the weekend but haven't heard a whole lot about it uh, is that something that might play into the race today well and they put it down to enhance grip to help the track take rubber now down in turns one and two in the upper two grooves they did not reapply it. It was applied a year ago and that's the last time it was applied. But they did apply it to the two upper grooves in turns three and four. So far practice qualifying even the ARCA race we've not seen it be a factor but you put 36 drivers out yeah. there it could become a player. Well and as it gets warm as it warms up and you get these longer runs guys start searching around for grip and as the pace slows down you can venture up there and, and, and they'll they'll get up into that today and yeah. try to make you it work. you surprised it hasn't been an issue so far or well, something just that we've kind just of because of the practice we've had in cup being yeah. at night, it was cool that it, it, it wasn't a need yeah. to go up there. Yeah, good point. Mm -hmm. All right, how about this? A uh, guy who's mastered this one mile track twice in his career is, of course, Justin Allgaier. In his 25 starts, he's got an average finish of 8.5. Looking, of course, to kickstart his season today at Phoenix. He's with Josh Sims. Yeah, Justin Allgaier is going to start on the front row, and we we're just talking about your numbers, looking for win number three here in Phoenix. So do you have something in that car to get that done today? Uh, well, I feel like I've talked to you all day today, which is a good thing. That means that our car has been really, really good, but uh, really proud of everybody at GMO Sports. You know, our Hello Water Camaro was uh, pretty decent in practice. We were having a steering issue, and so you know, qualifying was like the first judge if we got a fix, and, and honestly, um, couldn't be more proud of our team for, for you know, kind of diving in. You know, that short little bit of time that we've got, uh, but we were still able to, to discuss what we need from a balance standpoint and, you know, what the track's going to do. You know, the sun was out big time earlier, and it's it's chilled off probably, you know, a good 10 or 15 degrees, and, and the track is obviously going to come down with the sun being out or behind the clouds. So I feel good about our, our race day. I feel like, you know, pit stops have been solid. Our team has been solid, and we've executed well. We've just had like one hiccup every week that's kept us from winning these races, and today we're going to do our best job to not have those hiccups. You talk about hiccups, but you've not finished worse than third so far this year. So that's a pretty good start. What's been the key to that consistency? Honestly, I wish I knew. You know, I think the biggest thing is just data. Um, you know, this year we've we focused a lot on the details and, and really analytics of, of what I need to do to be faster inside the car and what the team needs to be do to be, uh, you know, keeping up with the with the adjustments. And, you know, Jim Pullman's done a great job for me and really focusing me in on the, on the little details that I, I feel like I've, you know, I, I'm not good at right and and you know it's not any better or worse than we were last year uh it's just a different mentality and a different mindset and i feel like that that's been something for me that's been a, a you know when you make a change you, you have to make the most of the change right and i feel like we've we've done that really really well and and um, you know we're just going to keep digging along if we're this good this early with our new groups um as as, as, a, as a company i feel really strongly about the summer and when we get into the playoff time thanks justin yeah, I mean, the hiccup is, as Josh just mentioned, I'm so glad he followed up with that. Yeah, he hasn't finished outside the top three. What stood out to you about that interview? Uh, well, first of all, I love honesty. And and I, the reality when, you know, you ask him, why are they running better this year? And he's like, I, I really don't know. 
a lot of times you don't know why you're running good and you don't know why you're, you're not running well. Uh, things just either go your way or they don't. But he talked about execution right there, and, and, and he felt like they'd had a hiccup over the past three races without winning. But to me, the one thing that the nine team or the seven team has done better this year is that they're running about like they did last year, but they are getting better finishes. It just seemed like last year those late cautions would come out and the wrong decision would be made or Justin would make a mistake, and they haven't had that this year, and he, they've done an incredible job. Yeah, I think everybody was kind of scratching their head when Junior Motorsports put three teams, three drivers in the championship four, and they took crew chiefs and shuffled yeah, them all around. But, but honestly, Jim Pullman has been with Justin before. They won an ARCA championship a number of years ago, and Jamie kind of mentioned it. If you go back to the five last five races of last year, Justin finished in the top ten, so he's actually sitting on eight consecutive top tens. And I'm going to tell you what, at Phoenix, when Justin Agar qualifies up on the outside the front row, woe being the competitors. It's a good track for him. He, not only does he have two wins, 17 top tens, that's the most top tens he has at any single track. I was going to mention that 17 top tens. Is this a, I mean, because we see it obviously with Kevin Harvick on the cup side, right? He's nine wins at this racetrack. Why does a driver just seem to connect with this place in particular? Well, it's a tough track, and it's, it's hard to pass that and it just seems like some guys have a knack a good feel for this track um, but I think we want to expand more on on junior motorsports as a whole here there was a rules change in the offseason to the rear suspension of these cars and and honestly I was a little bit nervous was it going to affect everybody Jun thought they were the reason they made the rule right. change and, and the one thing if you remember how how Hendrick Motorsports ran in 2021 2022 uh, or 20 and 21 you know we, we kind of thought all that technology got applied to, to junior motorsports and it just hasn't seemed to affect them. I mean, honestly, I feel like we have the same people running well. It hasn't really been a favor for anybody. I think they picked up right where they left off. Larry talked about all the crew chief changing. Seems like everything they've done has actually been been better. Is it? Yeah, I mean, I felt like at Daytona, Junior Motorsports let one get away. They just didn't <laughs> connect together there at the end of the race. But you talked about the West Coast swing. Outside of Brandon Jones, Mayor Algar and Josh Berry, five top fives, all top ten finishes. They've done everything so far this year, but five victory lane. They connected to Daytona. It just was with each other. <laughs> it, it wasn't it, just, it, yeah. it wasn't the what, right kind of connection. Know. We need to connect better. Uh, we're going to connect with Austin Hill when we come back. He, of course, making that next to last lap pass one week ago in Vegas to get the win. Can he get two in a row today? He's going to join us live right here on Race Day. Welcome back to race day. So the number 21 is huge in Vegas. We know that in the casinos and so was the 21 car one week ago at that Las Vegas racetrack. Austin Hill drove to his second victory of the season and he made the end of the race. One heck of a finish to watch just like his win at Daytona. The season opener for the NASCAR Xfinity Series live in Daytona Beach, Florida. Oh. He's upside down. The caution is out. For a second consecutive season, Austin Hill is the season opener at Daytona. That's right. Well, it's time to go racing in Las Vegas. New leader is Austin Hill. Wow. Austin Hill wins it in Vegas. Yes, baby! Woo! That's why you never give up, baby. That's how you celebrate inside the race car. Just let me know, Jamie Mack. Yes, baby! Uh, two wins and a sixth place finish. What a start to the season as we say hello to Austin, who is joining us now from Phoenix. So awesome to have you on the show, bud. Listen, I went back and watched one of your interviews, the post-race interviews from Daytona, and you said this, quote, you said, I have a chip on my shoulder. I want to prove to people that I belong in Xfinity. I belong to compete for championships. I am wondering how far did last week's win on that 1.5-mile track further prove just that yeah i mean I, th I definitely think it it proved to everyone that i can get the job done on other racetracks other than super speedways right uh you know i was very fortunate last year to win twice on a super speedway style tracks and then going into this season um like i like i said I, i've had a chip on my shoulder i want to go prove everyone that I can win on all these different sorts of racetracks, just like I did in the truck series. You know, I won on dirt in the truck series, road course race, and that type of thing. And, um, you know, I want to do the same thing on the Xfinity side. So uh, it's been a really fun start to the season. Uh, I felt like we struggled at Fontana. So uh, if that is one of our bad races to run sixth, I'll take it. And uh, I feel really good about today. I, I know we didn't qualify quite where we wanted to. We're still inside the top 10. Uh, still have a shot at it, but um, we got some work to do when the green flag drops, but 
can't thank everyone at RCR enough for, for everything they've done in the offseason. We've been working extremely hard to get to where we're at, and um, I'm having fun with it right now. Well, Austin, take us back to last weekend. That's got to be like the most thrilling way as a driver to be able to, to win a race because 15 or 20 laps to go, you're like four seconds back. And, I, and watching, I'm like, they have no chance of catching Chandler. And then all of a sudden you start chipping away. Tell, take us through, like, at what point were you like, I might actually have a shot at this and then being able to pass him for the win? Yeah, so I, I, I think with a probably about 10 to go, I was like, okay, as long as I, you know, keep chipping away at this and I was listening to lap times and trying to, you know, just hit my line perfectly. Uh, the bottom lane right on the white line was where you needed to be uh, most of the race. So that's just what I just focused on was just trying to stay committed to not miss my marks, be right on the line. And um, as I saw us getting closer to the 16, it's like blood in the water, right? I mean, you, you, you just smell it and uh, you're wanting to go get it. And getting into turn three, I, I could tell that the 16 was struggling with being tight. He missed the bottom just by a little bit. And I throttled up and just hope it stuck. And, and when I got beside him, I wasn't expecting to clear him as quick as I did. But that helped out a lot, being able to clear him before we got into turn, up, turn one, had that clean air. And then I just had to hit my mark one last time. Uh, through the one and two and through three and four and bring it home. So that's one area that we really worked on in the off season was being better on the long run. I thought that we were really good on the short run last year, but we'd fall off really quick. Um, so that's one thing that we really honed in on at Las Vegas was just not worry so much about the first 10 or 15 laps of the run. Worry about when you got into 40 or 50 laps in a run, how good your car was. So Austin, back to this race today. This will be your third Xfinity Series start at Phoenix. You finished 17th at 9th last year. You talked about your qualifying effort. You're going to start 8th, that you've got work to do when this green flag drops. But talk about the importance of a good run here for you and your crew chief, Andy Street, knowing that in roughly eight months, you're going to be back there, possibly racing for a championship. Yeah, I mean, like you're, like you're saying, I mean, I think that coming into this weekend we have a lot of high hopes and we we're going to try to figure out what our strengths and what our weaknesses are uh, at this racetrack you know whether are we good on entry to the center and are we bad on exit or vice versa like we're just going to play around with that today um, really with us being locked in we can try some things right we can try some different strategies and, and different techniques on the racetrack and even if they don't work and I lose some spots on the track it's not going to be the end of the world so uh, we're going into kind of test mode today we still want to win we still want to get the job done but there's some things that I'm going to do on the racetrack just to try to be prepared for later in the season when we go into the playoffs hopefully we can get in the final four and um, you know our United Rentals Chevrolet is really fast today we can stay up front get stage points get stage wins just do all those things right and uh, be as fast as Xfinity 10G at the end of this deal. <laughs> you got, you got it in. Get that work you in. got it in. Uh, speaking of, <laughs> we got it in. Yeah, speaking of playoffs and championships, uh, let's see your shoes, buddy, right? I mean, listen, we've got to right. roll tide uh, in here. Larry had the same ones yeah. on earlier today. <laughs> and to think, I call you and congratulate you on every win. And Those are awesome. Doing. Can we get a go dogs? Like, you know, we've got to get right. a go dogs. That's right, go dogs. There you go. That's <laughs> right, go <laughs> dogs. While you can. Yeah, Kirby would be happy. Kirby would be very happy. All right, we know we're going to I know Larry's hometown. excited about that. <laughs> Always excited to talk about Georgia Bulldogs when the you know, Alabama gets beat. All right, we, we know we're going to your hometown next week, so good luck this weekend. Of course, we'll, we'll catch up with you next week as well. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Take care. Have fun out there. Uh, we've got much more to come up next. Uh, that guy right there, Parker Kligerman, is going to join us back with a full-time ride. Strong start to the season. Uh, he's going to talk to Josh Sims. And, hey, do you remember who won the first Phoenix Xfinity race? It was one of those cars right there. I'll tell you that much. We're going to revisit that when we get back. Those guys right there, he's got his work cut out for him today, doesn't yes, he? There, Larry Mack. Yeah, he's at least smiling. He's smiling now. We'll be right back. So all season long, we're celebrating 75. Oh, my goodness. Look at that guy today. I love it. Look at him. That's awesome. Oh, the fans are out in Phoenix. Yes. What a fun day. Weather's perfect. We've got some fans out there getting ready for some Xfinity Series racing. And as I mentioned, all season long, we're celebrating 75 years of NASCAR. As we look back on the years, let's flash back to 99. What a great race we've got in store for you today. Nice crowd on hand here at Phoenix. Green flag. Second place, Jeff Gordon is all over Jimmy Spencer. Yeah, and he'll worry him to death. 
thing he's about this one. When he gets in that mirror, he's going to the outside, to the inside. Last lap. Here he comes off turn four. And Jeff Gordon becomes the 14th driver to win a Bush Series race in 1999. Fun, fun moment. Always good with Mike Jeff's voice right there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's been doing it for a million years. It's always great to see Jeff Gordon get to victory. He was, let me tell you, Best guy to celebrate a victory ever. And, and then he was already into his seventh full-time season in Cup, but he was still running some one-off Xfinity Series races. This is a stump to Shannon. Who finished second to him that day? Dale Jr. Dale Jr. <laughs> is your name Shannon? Thank you. No, 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 Thank I just want to go ahead and get that in real Despite quick. Despite <laughs> the, the, the crack I took at you earlier about yeah, your height, so you, you, you still helped me out. So when I watch that, I think back to, to that era of, of NASCAR and the, the top – Cup guys didn't run Xfinity Series races. Not like, I mean, when Kyle Busch came along. If they did, they were Kyle, driving their own car. Yeah, I mean, it was just <laughs> yeah. a different time then. So it was pretty unique to have a Jeff Warden be in the field that day. Uh, but I think you just get to see how talented a guy like that is when they come in. They don't run many races, and he's able to go out and win. Five years later, yours truly went out there and, and won a race. We've got a little video. Oh, you video. want to be my friend now. We, okay. uh, we got, you know, right. it's J-Mo. J-Mo wants to be your friend. We do love it. Look at this. We do love the that. You know who can finish second that Look day? Look at that crowd. Look at that hair. Oh, yeah. 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 Let me tell you something. That's frosted, frosted tip, tip at its finest, Larry. Oh, yeah. my Who goodness. Who finished second to Look at how uh, Kyle you are. Bush that day how finished about second. That? Yeah. How about and I that? did not interview in Victory Lane that yeah, day. Well, you said Jeff Gordon was the, the most fun in Victory Lane, well, so apparently listen, I'm aboard. I interviewed you after Talladega. You not won't go tall back and, and no you fun. Won't. That's Jamie McMurray for you. <laughs> All right. So, we, Jamie at Mac obviously has spent some time in the broadcast booth. Jeff Gordon has as well. Someone else who spent a few, few years talking into that mic is Parker Kligerman, who for the first time in 10 years has a full-time ride. He is with Josh Sims. Here with Parker Kligerman and Parker, you're going to have to go to the backup car to start this race. So what happened during qualifying? Ah, oh, it's really disappointing, Josh. Just, um, you know, had a little bit of soft pedal down to three, pumped it up down through the dog leg. And then when I hit the pedal, it had like initial bit and then it just wasn't a four. So couldn't stop the car. Uh, that's, you know, tough. It's just one of those mechanical things, right? We'll dissect it later. Right now, we just haven't had the time even to look, right? And I hate it for all these guys at Big Machine Racing. Patrick Donahue leads a great team here, and Scott Borchetta gives us this opportunity. You know, this spike core Chevy looks great. We've been doing all the right things, and then you have something like this happen where we had a pretty solid practice, right? We were in the top 10. I would worked really hard to be up to speed here uh, over this week and felt really good coming out of practice. Was really excited about that qualifying lap, and then had the mechanical issue. So we'll go to this backup car. The team's thrashed, man. Like, this is a really tight window to get this done, but they've done an excellent job, and hopefully I can go out there and do my job and make up for it. And you touched on it there. This is a place you haven't raced since 2013, but you put in a lot of extra work to get ready for it. Can you describe that? Yeah, it's just, you know, lots of look. We started back in November, right? When we started, I circled a couple tracks, said I need to be there at those places. This is one of them. Um, mostly because I just hadn't been here often, right? And so I really wanted and relished the opportunity to sort of dive into that, get better. So we started doing simulator. I started looking at SMT, talking to people, that sort of thing. And I found a bunch of things over the last couple of weeks that, like, got me to where this week I did 1,000 laps in the simulator where I was like nailing it. I'm like, all right, I know how to drive. Like, I got it. And sure enough, I go and practice, and it nailed, it like lined up perfectly. And I was like, all right, this is it. But from there, you know, having this issue kind of is a setback. But I'm not, I'm not going to let that set back, the preparation, everything I've done to get here, because I really feel like it all worked. It was all the right direction. Um, you know, now we've, we've got this setback, but that's the best part about championship teams is, you know, when you get put behind, you find a way to get out of that hole, find a way to get ahead of setbacks like this. And I think this team has what it takes to do that. Thanks and good luck, Parker. Thank you, Josh. And ladies and gentlemen, that is the definition of half glass, uh, glass half full, if I can speak today. He is extremely optimistic, despite the fact that he has to start in the back. Yeah, and I love that interview because when, when I was, you know, reading about his past at this track, he doesn't have a lot of starts and hasn't had much success here. So it's interesting to hear how much time he put in at the simulator trying to get better yeah. at this track, knowing that this was probably going to be a weak track for him. And, and when you look at their season overall, they haven't been great. They haven't been bad. They've just kind of been average. Uh, 10th and 11th the last two weeks. He had to overcome the spin with John Hunter Nemechek last week, so I think to be able to recover where they did was pretty good. But I'm with Parker. I have high expectations. I, I think they can get to victory lane. I think this team is capable of getting to victory lane. But right now, Larry, they've kind of stalled out in this, like, 10th to 12th place team, and they've got to come over and get over that hump. Well, here's big machine racing. This race team right here, as they prepare that backup car, and the time's running out on them. Yep. they got a lot of work to do in a short time to do it. But when you think about this race team, this is only their third year as an organization. Parker is the first driver that's full-time in that car. Last year, they had 
10 different drivers, but yeah. they did win a race. <laughs> Tyler Reddick won Texas in that 48 car. Parker actually drove it at Talladega and finished six. I just think Parker's that type of driver. I know he got in trouble in qualifying, but was not of his doings. He's the type of driver that will take what that car will give him mm -hmm. and for the most part, keep it out of trouble. Yeah, he said tight window to get that car ready for really the race tight, today. Yeah. Think about the tight window it's going to take to get from the back to the front. Yeah, sure. Only right 200 sure. miles to do that. Uh, speaking of uh, someone that also has to come from the back to the front, that would be Kyle Busch. Josh Sims is going to catch up with him next. Yeah, he's pretty good at Phoenix. I bet in his the window's Xfinity a little series. bigger. Yeah, in the Xfinity Series. And we're going to spend a little time with that guy, Chandler Smith, at Colleague Racing. New kid at the shop. Oh, oh, oh. The new kid's on the block there. I'm no? You have that no shot. good? <laughs> Oh, yes. Chandler Smith last week, 20 year old, dominated the race one week ago in Vegas. He led 118 laps and looked like he might be on his way to his first Xfinity Series win. But with two laps to go, Smith lost the lead to race winner Austin Hill. He finished third. Definitely a tough lesson for a young driver. But after teaming with Colleg Racing during the offseason, team and driver are definitely on the same page. <laughs> We're here at Colleague Racing today. We're gonna give a little bit of a shop tour. I'm a rookie. I don't have all the answers, but I'll give you a lot of them. Follow me, let's go this way. So now we're here in the lobby of the Top Shop, and this is kind of the history, the early days of Colleague Racing here. And it's really cool to see how far they've come as an organization, as a company, from day one. The number 11 has a really rich history of Colleague Racing because of our owner, Matt Colleague. He used to be the quarterback at Akron. A lot of things you'll find here at Colleague Racing is our saying. This is one of the more famous ones from Matt Colleague is make it a great day. No matter what, even if you're having a bad day, didn't have a good race, it's always a good day. Collie Racing gets the reputation of, oh, they're a small team, kind of the David and Goliath story. You come here, no, we're not no small team. We're a pretty big team. We're very well established, and our stuff's nice. We do it right. We know how to have fun while being serious at the same time and going out and performing. A lot of other teams don't know how to do that first thing, have fun and still get the other three things done at the same time. And that makes everybody love their jobs. They get up every morning, come work at Collie Racing, and they love it. Fab Shops right over there. They roll out, come right here, start getting their first little touch-ups. Lenny, what are you working on over here, buddy? Atlanta cars. Atlanta cars? Yep. Yeah, you better make that one extra fast. Hopefully, I, yeah, that's mine. Yeah, that one. <laughs> Tough one to swallow this past weekend, but that's okay, because at the end of the day, the reality is, it's my third race with this organization. That was my sixth Xfinity race, and uh, we're performing really well. Race leader Chandler Smith. It's hard to put a price tag on how someone this young can handle the big stage. He's struggling off the two. Really thought Chandler Smith had that race in the bag. No matter what all the variables we could sit here and throw out, I still would have probably lost that race because it was not meant to be. I know that there's something in preparation for myself and this team that's bigger than what that could have been. So now we've made it down to the bottom shop. We got one of the regular season championship trophies, which I've never seen this in person. Looks really cool. So right here, you can barely see it. I know you have to like literally be staring at it. In these little beams, all the racetrack names on it. That's what you go for is the trophy. You don't go to get second place. You don't get to go third. And if you are, then you're in the sport for the wrong reasons. And no matter where you are, if you're not going out to win races, then I don't know what you're doing in the racing industry, quite honest with you. My realistic goals for this season, we can at least get one win. That's bare minimum what has to happen for myself. No matter what anybody else says in the organization, that's what we got to do. I feel like what we can do is win multiple races and make it pretty deep in the playoffs. The challenges, the adversity that you got to deal with in this sport, it makes you better as a human. It's all lifelong lessons that you take through your day-to-day -day life. So over here is set up plates. Set up plates for Xfinity and Cup. Crossing your T's, dotting your I's. This is where a lot of magic happens at, actually. Your pull-down rig and our Hawkeye machine. We put in the work right here. So, unfortunately, that's the end of the tour. I actually got stuff to do. So y'all gotta go. See y'all. I would say one win is a, is a low-level expectation because I think this team could definitely win more than one with uh, Chandler Smith. Is this the perfect pairing in your mind, Jamie? 
I mean, up to this point, it's been it's been pretty good. And and I would say that Chandler Smith, for me, is the best surprise of the Xfinity Series this year. I, I didn't see this coming. I, I remembered watching him in the trucks. I didn't pay a lot of attention. And when he came over here, I, I didn't know what to expect. But it's been pretty incredible to be in the top five the last two weeks. We, you know, we know how close he came last week to be able to get the win. And he had Kyle Busch as a teammate last weekend, and he outran Kyle Busch yeah. at Vegas, a great track for Kyle. Uh, and when I look at him today and have the success he's had in the trucks at this track, he's going to have a really good day today. And he might get that one win he's talking about this afternoon. I love the timeline of college racing. Nine years ago, Matt was just sponsoring a car in Xfinity Series. This is his eighth year as a car owner. And look what he has built it to. Three full-time Xfinity Series teams, two full-time cup teams, 19 Xfinity Series wins with four different drivers, and has that win on the Indy Road Course a couple of years ago in the Cup series with A.J. Allmendinger. I felt like last year was an off year and you may say, wait a minute, Allmendinger won five races. He won four road courses in Talladega. Their intermediate stuff was off, but when I look at the way they ran at Las Vegas last week, I say they're getting back on track. Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, we've got much more to come here on race day as we get you ready uh, for Xfinity Series racing at Phoenix. These guys are going to be joining us next. They're up at the booth. Oh, it's the booth of fame. we got Joey Logano, Ooh. Kevin Harvick, and Fancy. that other guy as well. Uh, Adam Alexander, of course. We love you, Adam. Uh, they're the drivers getting ready behind the stage, getting ready to get introduced, hanging out, talking about this. What is it, Jamie? Uh, Nothing. <laughs> Out. What a horrible feeling. Oh, what the heck just happened down at turn one? <laughs> there was cars everywhere. I don't think he's going to make it very far. He's into the wall. That car now, it's on fire. Hot blooded. I'm hot blooded. I'm hot. You're like, help me up for Winfrey. I'm on fire. That's from Talladega Nights right there. Uh, the three men in the broadcast booth today have a combined total of 19 wins across all three series. At Phoenix, I would say that is uh, pretty good. Kevin Harvick, Joey Logano on a call with Adam Alexander. Of course, Jamie Mack has a win here as well, but Adam, that doesn't matter, right? We're not going to talk about him right now. <laughs> I think it was like 100 years ago, wasn't it? I don't even know when McMurray won here. I, I'm not even sure the cars had tires when Jamie <laughs> won the race here. They're wooden wheels. Hey, yeah, here's the deal. The best part is we're in a break, and, and we're talking about stats. I have none here, by the way. And Joey's like, Kevin, you won here nine times? And then I can't say what came after that. He was astonished. <laughs> hey, we know this track is unique, but when you start talking about unique venues, where does Phoenix rank? Well, I, I think it creates a lot more challenges now that they have redone the dog leg. And, and on the restarts, it's in an awkward spot to not spin the tires, to not, it's, it's, it's just really in a weird spot. So you have to not spin the tires, and then it just opens up down through the dog leg onto the apron and into turn one. So uh, that's the first thing. And then you have the, the short run cars that can go really fast, and then you have the cars that go really fast at the beginning that fall off a lot. So there's a lot to digest when it comes to making your car run fast here and what section of the racetrack you want to be good at. So it's, it's fun for us to watch, and I think we'll see a lot of comers and goers today. And I'll be listening to you the whole time. So I thought three wins was great here until I heard nine, and I was like, oh, I suck. So I mean, that's kind of what that felt like. But I, it, this track is really fun. It's, it's a very challenging racetrack. There's a lot of things that these drivers are going to be looking for today because this can be the most important race for them when we come back here in the fall. You know, this is just the championship race. And for four of these drivers that are out here today, they're going to have a chance at it. So learning everything you possibly can today, taking the best notes you can about how to race other cars, what your car's doing throughout a run, the right strategies, all these things are going to really matter. Not that they don't today, but they're really going to matter when you come back here in the fall. I'm doing the math. Nine wins, three wins, that's 12 total. If you average the three of us together, that's that's four wins apiece. So I'm feeling right there. better <laughs> and better about myself. Let's go down to pit road. Here's Josh Sims. All right, here with Kyle Busch, and Kyle, you're going to have to go to the back of the field to start this race. So what happened and what did you find during practice? Uh, the fuel pump and fuel regulator, something was amiss between the two of those, and they weren't really talking very well with each other. So um, had to change both of those out, and hopefully that's the remedy, and we'll be all good to go for today. But um, just unfortunate to not get to qualify and, uh, and see where we stack up against the field of Xfinity Series regulars and also get a good pit selection for the team for next week. But 
um, you know, fixing our issues and making sure we have a good race today was was foremost. So felt good about the car in practice, though. Uh, pretty optimistic about it. A lot of guys are loose. We're loose, so that seems to be the trend. Uh, it's just a matter of who can keep keep up with it the best. And then second week in the college car in the number 10. So what did you learn? What did you pick up on that can help the team overall? Yeah, well, I felt like, you know, last week we were so loose in practice that we had to tighten it up so much that the front side of the run was good, but the back side of the run suffered because we were just too tight. Um, but this time around, I feel like the car had really good balance, had really good turn. And so definitely still loose, but that's kind of the trend of these cars. And I'm still trying to get back to remembering much of that. And Phoenix here, last time I ran here, feels like the grip level is diminished a ton and you're just kind of sliding around so it's going to be a matter of how well you can hold on that's a good luck Kyle Shannon yeah second week in a row he's got to come from the back but this is the track where you listen you never count Kyle Busch out at, at Phoenix well he talked about the grip level has diminished the last time he actually raced Xfinity Series was three years ago in 2020 when he finished third but when I think about 102 wins and That's 11 of them at Phoenix. That means over 10% of his Xfinity Series wins, they've come right there at that one-mile racetrack. The man has led over 2,200 laps at that racetrack. Well, I hope they get his car fixed because it's going to be a lot of fun for us to watch him come from yeah. the back and, and move up through the you field. You ever heard the term hot knife through butter? Yep, that's what, that's what he's going to look like. I have heard that, that term many times before. Did, well, I don't were know. You Larry done? shot that were whole knife in butter, and it's just, I'm like, he can have it. You weren't done? You weren't done yeah, talking? Done. Okay, you're done. All right, how about this? We'll play a little stump the Mac. Do you want to do no. that? I'm going to talk about the hot knife in butter. That's not the reaction I was hoping for. Larry Mack is ahead. You guys I mean, look it's just so like serious. a butt whooping. You guys look serious. Uh, I mean, still two to nothing. I mean, listen, you could come back at any time. Larry, I'm going to start with you. Who is the Phoenix born actress who was the original Wonder Woman? I know this one. Didn't have at it. Linda Carter. Okay, let's give that one to Jamie. I don't know how I know that, but I know that one. Did you not know that? Heck no. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how I knew that one. I thought you would know that. So we'll give you mm. uh, Jamie's question. Uh, Justin Allgaier has three straight top three finishes to start the season. Which driver did that last year, Larry? Oh, my gosh. In Xfinity Series. You know what his name. In Xfinity Series. In the Xfinity Series. No, it breaks him, Larry. Spit it out. Come on. <laughs> He's killing me this week. Goodness He's gracious. He's got two. He's got two. Because I said you know uh, his name. <laughs> so that's I totally fair. gave it to you. Uh, Jamie, after Kyle Busch's 11 Xfinity Series wins at Phoenix, who has the second most? Uh, I'm going to say Harvick. I don't know that. No, I just do you know? In Xfinity Series. In Xfinity Series. <laughs> I, got, I have to keep yeah. clarifying that. Yeah, I'm going to flip if you don't it's know this one. It's not it's, it's Edwards. I gave you a mm -hmm. clue as well. I said I'm going to flip if you don't know this one. Uh, okay. I don't even know where we are. Who, JMO, who are we going to next? <laughs> okay. Larry, well, what team ended New I England Patriots' me. unbeatable season uh, in the Super Bowl at Phoenix? Which team beat the New in England? In Xfinity Series? <laughs> no, not in the Xfinity. <laughs> in the National that. Football League. The Colts? No, really? The Colts? Did they win that a game? That be the New York football giants. <laughs> Jamie, look at that. Just like that. Off, off the top rope. Two to come two. Back. Oh, One yeah. to come back. Was, Wonder Damn, Woman. God, it's Linda all Carter. about Linda Carter. You don't know Carter. Linda Carter. Uh, yeah, I know Linda Carter. Linda one-dimensional life. <laughs> <laughs> Linda Carter is Linda Carter. Oh, hi, girls. Have fun out there today. We'll be right back. You guys ready to go racing? Put Absolutely. your hands up. Put your hands up in the air and wave them like you just Put don't care. Put your hands up. If you're ready to go racing, she's ready to go racing. Absolutely got her headset on. Fire up those engines, she said. I am ready to go. He's ready to go, too. Daniel Hemrick qualified third. Remember, one career win in the Xfinity Series, but it was a big one November of 21 that won him the Xfinity Series championship that year. It sure did. That was a big victory. See if he can get it done later today. How about Cole Custer? Only one top 10 this season, but he's been fast every single weekend, guys. We know Fontana had a great car. He had a good car last week at Vegas. Just has to put the whole race together, but he's been in the top 10 at Phoenix in his last five starts. There is Ryan Truex, and it is not junior just for the record. Yep. Qualified 12th, his first start in that Joe Gibbs car in 2023. He was fastest in every category as far as long run speed. Has a second place finish at Phoenix back in 2019. That's he, the same hair Larry had back in the 70s right there. Well, the they must exactly. go to the same barber. How about this? First start for Leland Honeyman, uh, a Phoenix native, and I love this, Shannon. Listen to this. This is his life. He likes to eat, sleep, work out and racing. That's about it. 18 years old. I mean, I like what, what else are you doing at Leland right there? He Honeyman. actually made a truck series start at Bristol last year. He did. Well, there you go. And now he's starting in his hometown. 
Uh, we got some race picks uh, to go. We're going to pick Jamie. Jamie, you're going to go first. Why do I keep getting to go first? That's because so nice. you know who you're going to yeah. pick when you go first, right? It's going to be. Uh, yeah, it, uh, it was pretty easy. He only has 11 wins at this track. We talked. Larry said he led 1.2 million laps at Kingston. <laughs> I'm going to go with Kyle million. Busch. I know he has to go to the back, but it's just hard to go against Kyle Busch when you're at this track. I'm, I'm going to go with the driver that ran us out of the shop. He said, I got something to do. I've got to go win Phoenix. Chandler Smith has a win in ARCA in the truck series. He'll get that Xfinity series win today. All right, so my pick for today, same guy I picked last weekend, Justin Allgaier, two Phoenix wins. You mentioned it, 17 top tens at Phoenix. I think that this is the weekend that he gets it done. All right, Xfinity Series racing coming up. We got Adam, we got Kevin Harvick, Joey Logano, all of those guys, lots of wins up in the booth. Let's go trackside for opening ceremonies. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you please rise as you are able and remove your hats as the Arizona State University Navy ROTC Color Guard presents our nation's colors. Here to offer today's invocation, please welcome the lead pastor from 210 Church in South Phoenix, Antoine Anderson. Shall we pray? Father, we are just so grateful for your faithfulness. We thank you for all who have come together to make this amazing event take place. We pray that you would just continue to cover every aspect, every driver, every pit crew team member. We thank you for every family that is out here to celebrate. And Father, we ask that you continue to bless us to have memories of this event. We thank you, we love you, and we bless you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Here to perform our national anthem, please welcome singer and entertainer from Quartzsite, Arizona, Sam Saxton. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the round parts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets Bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled banner yet wave? Bush wins with the best glasses on pit road. If you saw that shot, I'm sure you'll see him at some point as Kyle Bush tries to make his way through the field. We will be back with Xfinity Series racing from Phoenix. We've had our fun on the Western Front. Oh my gosh. But there's still one last race to complete the trifecta. We are off and rolling in the desert. The unforgiving sun makes the pathway to Victory Lane more like finding an oasis in this desert. While experience bodes well, these young slingers bring just enough grit to avail this treacherous landscape. Oh, big wreck down the back stretch. Up and over. Wow. It's heating up right here on FS1. Just a 30-minute drive from downtown Phoenix. It's Phoenix Raceway. Fox NASCAR live in Avondale, Arizona. As today, we wrap up the West Coast Swing with a NASCAR Xfinity Series, and we are doing it with a couple of Phoenix legends in the booth. Kevin Harvick has won here nine times. Yes, he knows his way around the desert mile. Logano has won here three times, including last November when he claimed his second 
Cup Championship. With the fellas, I'm Adam Alexander. So good to have you with us on this Saturday afternoon. So when we come back in November, we're racing for a title. But Joey, this is like a short track. So how aggressive are these drivers going to get today? Uh, <laughs> they're going to be aggressive. Just like everywhere else we've seen so far in the Xfinity Series, these drivers get after it, and the opportunity is big here, especially on the restarts. You're going to hear us talking about it all day long. That dog leg, we hear it every time. It's wide. You can be five wide, easy. And when you get to turn one, it might get down to four or three wide, and then you get off the corner, and it's maybe still three wide. You better figure it out by the time you get into turn three. So how aggressive drivers will be there? I think they'll be pretty aggressive because because there's a lot on the line there. Those spots are hard to get later on, so you got to get them while you can. You, you know, we're educational here in the Fox booth. Earlier, we pointed out that Kevin has nine wins, and Joey said, you have how many wins here? <laughs> so with all that success, take us for a lap. We went on board with you during practice yesterday, Kevin. Well, it's a, a very unique racetrack with the dog leg that they've redone since they remodeled the racetrack. And for, for the Xfinity cars, you won't be shifting down the straightaway like the cup car here. But there's a few options when you get to turn one. You can go all the way to the apron, you can ride this yellow line, or you can go a couple grooves up the racetrack and get a good run off the corner. Basically, you don't want to do what I just did. You don't want to be in no man's land in the middle of the corner. As you come off down into turn three, I think as the, if the pace falls enough, off enough, we'll hear some of these guys shift. But you want that left front tire right on the yellow line, or how soon, Joey, will that PJ1 come in or the resin come in up the racetrack to be able to use that upper lane? So you've got options, and as a driver, that's really what you want. I really appreciate you playing along because that hiccup off of turn two, normally you wouldn't do that. You just did that to help illustrate what these drivers will be facing for TV. You are such a team player. You know that? <laughs> and, and we appreciate you playing along. We also appreciate, appreciate you doing that, too. <laughs> no we also appreciate Kyle Busch playing along because they had a mechanical issue. He's starting in the back today. The rally will be special. We look forward to it. Now we're going trackside for the command. And now, race fans, here to say the most famous words in motorsports, representing United Rentals, please welcome Michael Dirksen. Drivers, start your engines! The engines have fired. We are ready for a duel in the desert. The green flag in the air when we come back to Phoenix live on FS1. Just about time to get down to business in the desert. Drivers, it's been a busy West Coast swing. Green flag in the air. You can feel the buzz. Dustin, finish the deal and win it. Hell yeah. There goes Austin Hill. Phoenix Raceway, a place where memories are made. This is an awesome backdrop for a race. Phoenix, Arizona, great sports town. This weekend, all about NASCAR. The Xfinity Series racing here today for the 43rd time. Weather's great. I mean, it's the Valley of the Sun, and we have clouds, but no threat of precipitation, which is really nice. High temperature around 80 degrees. And one guy that loves coming to Phoenix, Justin Allgaier, really good here. In fact, he's been rolling lately, eight consecutive top tens, five times he's gone in the top five. In fact, going back to last year, four consecutive top three finishes. He hopes to finish the deal, get his third Phoenix win today. Starting on the front row, let's go from the driver's seat, Joey. Let's dial him up. Justin Allgaier, Joey Logano in the Fox booth, you got us? Yes, sir, loud and clear, go ahead, buddy. Well, we just checked out your stats, and they're very consistently up front. You look really good here. Obviously, starting up front again. What's it going to take to get your third win here? Well, to be honest with you, Joey, I don't feel like I've ever really been that great of a qualifier here, but I think with this rules package and the grip level that we saw this morning, uh, being a little bit of a veteran here probably helped me in knowing what to do. But, uh, you know, we gotta we got to make the most of it in the race. You know, these races are are short, but you know the fall off on tires is a big deal of making sure that you put yourself in good position all day. So, got a great team. Our Hello Water Camaro was really, really good all day and practice. And you know we uh, we don't know what to expect with this package to race, but I feel really confident that we got the team around us, the pit crew, spotter, everybody to do what we need to do. So we're gonna go have fun. We're gonna put on a great show for the fans back at home and, and that are watching and the fans that are here. We're gonna we're gonna enjoy Old Phoenix Raceway because this this place is a lot of fun. Copy that, man. I'm sure you'll have some fun and keep some air on the nose. See ya.
Hey, Thanks, if, he goes, if he goes top three today, he would join my man Kevin Harvick as one of only four drivers to start the season with four consecutive top three finishes. How about that? You think about that while we go to pit road. Let's check in with our reporters. We start things off with Regan Smith. Well, Adam, good afternoon. You alluded to Kyle Busch having issues in practice earlier today with the fuel system. That, of course, means they will have to go to the rear. I checked in with Kyle. He said he felt like the race car was very good, shouldn't have a problem making his way forward in that. But keep an eye on that car for other reasons. Colic Racing, who has struggled at the Phoenix racetrack, is looking to Kyle to help them get that figured out. Of course, this is the championship race later this year. If one of their other two cars is to win the championship, they're going to have to rely on Kyle to get that setup dialed in and help them out just a little bit for later this season. Josh Sims. Well, Regan, speaking of one of those other two cars, let's talk about Chandler Smith in the 16, who may be a rookie, but he looks far from it. Top five in the last two races in that Vegas. He led the most laps and lost the lead with two laps to go. Nearly won the thing. When I asked him what he learned, he said, man, I learned we got fast enough cars to win. Well, speaking of speed, he was top three in practice, qualified six, and this is a guy that won here in Arca. He won here in a truck, and now he's looking to add an Xfinity victory here at Phoenix to his resume. Hey guys. He is showing a lot of speed in his rookie campaign, no doubt about that. So you've heard from the guys in the, the booth. We, we checked in with our pit reporters. Now let's go to the spotter stand. I think your guy's up there, Joey. Yeah, absolutely. Coleman Presley, the spotter, the double deuce. He's got, the I think, the best view of the house, maybe with some challenges as well. He's braving the elements. Coleman, what do you see up there? Hey, Joey, excited to be here today. Phoenix International Raceway is known as one of the most difficult spotter stands in the series. We're located over here in turns three and four. It's a long ways over to turns one and two. Very difficult for the spotters to, to see how these restarts funnel out going into turn one, and then as the cars come back at you off of turn two, they're coming straight at you. Once they get down into three and four, we have the best view in the house. It's right below us. Got a great view of the downshifts, watching how the resin coming in, watching as the restart zone takes place. It's going to be a a lot of good stuff coming at you guys. Hey Coleman, is there any way that you could be a little more still when you have that camera when they have that camera on? We, we don't want to see a bunch of shaking, so just keep your hips steady if you could. <laughs> I got you. Hey, <laughs> it's better he's up there today than last week if we wanted a steady cam because it was, it was windy, windy. Oh yeah. man, yeah. Las Vegas. This is an awesome feature. All day long, Kaz Grala, who's got our Toyota onboard camera, is going to have that heart rate monitor on. Right now, you know, it's, it's not going crazy. But, but a baseline of 60, up over 100, when we get to green flag, that thing's really going to pop. I can't wait to watch this. This is, this is something that I, I love to keep track of. And a lot of the heart rate depends on the ambient temperature and how hot it gets inside the car. So uh, it won't get as high today as it probably will in the middle of the summer. But I promise you it's going to shoot up on these restarts and, and as, as the run goes on. And, and when you look <laughs> at that heart rate, it, it, it's really difficult to explain to people how high the heart rate stays throughout the race and how many calories you burn. So it's uh, going to be fun to follow. I wore a heart rate monitor last week, and I averaged 180 beats. Oh, he's got it all. The whole race. <laughs> so 180. I, oh, yeah, man. I'm, I'm kicking in there, ready to go. Lots of, uh, lots of adrenaline for me. I got to try really hard to go fast, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so we, we had the, the Toyota on board. This is the Ford onboard camera, our driver's eye. Riley Herp's going to take us through the paces today, qualified in the 10th position and looking for his personal best seventh consecutive top 10 finish dating to last year. Here's the race analysis, 200 laps, 200 miles here at this one mile facility. The stage breakdown, just like last week in Las Vegas, 45 laps and 45 laps in stage one and stage two, then a long run to end it. Fuel window, 80 to 85 laps. Keep this in mind. Only one set of tires laying in that final stage, so not a tremendous amount of strategy today. We talked about Kyle Busch going to the back, the same for Jeffrey Ernst. Hart Parker Kligerman is in a backup car. They had to thrash hard to get the 48 ready. Cole Custer, first pole of the year, takes the inside lane to his right. Justin Allgaier, it is time to make it happen in Phoenix. Off we go in the desert. Time now. Inside quarter. You're clear. Clear. Charler. And immediately, that's exactly what you expect. Everyone to go down there right off the bat. But what I see already is a seven of Justin Algar losing two spots from the front row, not chasing him down onto the flat there. The amount of distance he lost right off the bat uh, cost him already. John Hunter Nemechek 
pushing Sheldon Creed a bit there as they come through the corner. Nemechek in the 20. The two is Sheldon Creed. Second place right now, Daniel Hemrick in the 11. Yeah, these first few laps are always so difficult because these cars are on used tires. The cup cars have been on the track. They're kind of retransitioning that rubber back to the Xfinity cars and, and the rubber that they have on the racetrack. And I'm sure Justin went in there and was like, OK, come on front. <laughs> come on front. Turn oh. at some point for me. Yeah. <laughs> well, you mentioned they're on old tires because they qualify and then they leave the, that set on. One guy not in that category, Kyle Busch, didn't make a qualifying run, so he starts the race from the back. But on stickers and, well, I guess tires do matter. I mean, I realize he's got a fast car, but that's an aggressive move across the dog leg. Well, I mean, what do you expect? I mean, it's, it's Kyle Busch in a really fast car with new tires. <laughs> Things coming to the front in a hurry. And it's going to get harder as it gets closer to the front, obviously. But these first two cars, he's going to pick them off so easily. And we see Sheldon Creed right there really low on the racetrack. I really like the fact that he could keep that left front tire right on the yellow line and be able to get under Daniel Hemrick here and all but clear him uh, using the apron in, into turn one. A lot of strength for sure. Creed won the truck race here 2020 coming off his first top 10 of the season last week at Las Vegas. Our Toyota on board. Kaz Look, nice Look at this 110 on the pace laps 140 plus in traffic. We'll keep track of that heart rate when we go to the onboard bottom left of your screen as we race for third all dives to the inside of the 11 of Henry. Two former winners here. Yeah, and you see Justin Allgaier splitting that yellow line through through turns one and two. I would prefer that you either have the right sides on the yellow line or the left sides on the yellow line. I feel like in these cars, it's, it upsets it a little bit. But both of those guys, and uh, Daniel Hemrick and, and Justin Allgaier, have had some success at this particular racetrack. Something I always see, too, with these Xfinity cars, they don't like a car on their right side. They don't like when there's a car right next to them. They rely a lot on side force. And when you get a car right on your door, that inside car loses all their, their side force and gets really loose, particularly into the corner, especially like this part of the corner here as you enter turn three, like Kyle was there. If you get someone just door to door, that's kind of asking for trouble. <laughs> Kyle Busch up 14 positions, was plus 13 before he got around Anthony Alfredo. John Hunter Nemechek working his way back to the fourth position, dives around Daniel Henry. You know, Nemechek's never won here, but boy, has he been fast with a lot of different race teams, and he did win a couple of weeks ago, driving that 20 full time for Joe Gibbs Racing, got it done in Southern California. And that's his young rookie teammate, the 18-year-old Sammy Smith in the 18, driving hard across the dog leg. Well, Sammy's been pretty impressive here the first few races, especially from the speed department. He has a lot of speed. Kurt goes fast. He's able to uh, maintain good track position throughout the races and get a good finish. So, you know, that's, that's a lot of, uh, I'm pretty impressed for a young 18-year-old out here figuring it out at the big leagues. Well, and, and what's great for him here, he's been here before. Last two weeks, he was racing on tracks that he had never seen, and maybe the youth being taken advantage of. A couple of teenagers or a 20-year-old and an 18-year-old, and Josh Berry getting two for one. Yeah, Josh Berry said, you guys are going to mess around, and I'm just going to pass you both. But Not uh, yet. Not yet. <laughs> one in the middle, clear up, one inside only. Yeah, we saw him get the run off of turn four last lap and go all the way to the bottom. It's almost the same situation where he might go all the way. Nope. <laughs> I mean, one thing about going all the way to the bottom through the dog leg, it hurts a little bit. Like it, it's not a fun ride or enjoyable at all. It physically is painful, it's you mean. It's brutal. Like you got to adjust your helmet after you go through the whole right, thing. So you don't want to do it too much. It's not good for you, but it's also not real good for your race car either. Hey, Cole Custer had six laps led. In six starts at Phoenix, entering today, he's led the first 10 this afternoon. Here's what they're saying on team radio. A little tight firing off. Starting to get a little bit freer throughout a run. Have a little bit of front chatter to fire off. Yeah, that's pretty typical in these cars to have a little bit of front chatter, uh, especially at the beginning of the run on used tires. But even on even on new tires, you're going to have some chatter in the center of the corner, especially in turns one and two. So I'm interested to see how Cole Custer's car 
continues through the long run. Right now, everything's rosy, right? You don't have any traffic to work through, and you don't have any issues with, with uh, you know, the air on the front of the car. So he's running the traditional left front tire on the yellow line and, and uh, has some clear sailing and, and running good lap times. That's not a surprise, though. You know, Cole Custer, you know, good race car driver, has some cup experience now, now running Xfinity. To me, he's the favorite to win this championship this year. And him running up front, getting the poles, leading laps, not surprising at all. Yeah, I mean, we go back two weeks. I mean, we were in Fontana. We had a front row seat for him winning both stages before he had cut a tire down and finished deep in the field. They continue to go back and forth for second. It's Creed and Allgaier there, but that's happening two and a half seconds behind our race leader, Cole Custer, in charge in Phoenix. Look out. Phoenix Raceway is a very challenging racetrack. There's so many different lanes you can run with the resin that's down. A bunch of multi grip racing, the dog leg on the front stretch that makes restarts super exciting. It's like a short track and an intermediate all mixed together. You want to have short run speed and long run speed. It's got the short track corners, but the intermediate straightaways and high speeds. It definitely makes for some three and four wide racing that you got to watch yourself for sure. I love drivers talking about any racetrack. So greedy. I mean, I want a little bit of this. I want a little bit of that. I got to have options. You, you want it all, especially at a place like Phoenix. And you have options here. And I think as, as we go through this race in, in three and four, we're already starting to see the cars move up the racetrack, um, looking, looking for grip because this is a racetrack that you just have to understand that you can drive the car with the pedals. You can manipulate the car with where you're on a racetrack with the brake pedal and the throttle pedal and partial throttle and up the racetrack in the middle. So you just have you have a ton of options. Daniel Hemrick seventh right now. Regan, what's up there? Well, Adamie slid back a little bit since the start of the race right now. That car started very tight, and now it's going free, meaning the back of it wants to slide. But keep an eye on him as this race plays out. That team has highlighted some issues from the previous two races to where their car has been good for stages one and two. When they get to the third stage, they've lost the handle on it. They want to do a better job today of keeping up with the racetrack and keeping up with the handle on that car. Josh? an update on the on Josh Berry in the eighth car. Started off seventh, hasn't really been able to make up much ground so far. So the back end of that car is just scary and loose. So he needs some rear security to help him out. But the team reassuring him on the radio, just keep doing what you're doing. We'll take care of you. Yeah, and, and here's a driver that's managing a lot, right? I mean, he found out last Friday he's going to be filling in for Chase Elliott. Drove the nine car at Las Vegas, his third cup start. Double duty this weekend. So running back and forth between the two garages to totally different race cars. That's a big adjustment for a driver that doesn't have tons of experience. Middle point stage one. What are your observations from the spotter deck, Coleman? Yeah, Adam, looking at uh, the resin coming in in turns one and two, Sheldon Creed was one of the first guys to move up to it somewhere around lap seven. Take a look at what he's doing now as he's trying to work Justin Allgaier. Not only is he looking for clean air, he's entering with his right sides up against the resin. He's able to maintain across the center of the corner. As soon as he gets to the two-thirds of the corner of the corner where he is now, he's doing this big turn down. Watch how big that run carries all the way down the back straightaway. Now everyone behind him sees what's happening. Their spotters have let him know, so most of the field by behind Sheldon Creed has now moved up in one and two. It's going to be interesting to see how quick maybe Justin Allgaier or even Cole Custer gives it a shot. Yeah, that's something, you know, as a, as a driver, you want to know that information as quickly as possible. So, as soon as someone's able to move up and find speed, you want to know that. How are they making speed? How high are they? I don't want to go too high. I don't want to be, get up in the marbles and slide into the fence. But if there's grip there, I want to mess with that and try to figure out how can I make my race car go faster and hang with the leaders like Sheldon Creed's doing right now? Let's go back outside the top 10. I mentioned the fact we're at the midway point of the opening stage, and Kyle Busch is already up to 14th. Now, the advantage he had on the sticker tires pretty much gone right now, right? But, but he is putting himself in position to pounce, especially if he can get to the top 10 before the end of the stage. Well, Kyle Busch knows exactly what he wants his car to feel like here. He's won here 11 times, so he, he obviously knows exactly what he needs in his race car, and he's going to have some great feedback as he gets done with this run uh, for, for the team to, to make those adjustments because we heard Justin Allgaier talk about it earlier. The rules package is a little bit different, so the characteristics of what's going to happen with the car are going to be a little bit different than, than what they've had here before. You know, we talked about how many spots he's up. You see it right there, 23 spots for Kyle Busch. But he's kind of leveled out right here in 14th, which means he's going to want to make a pit stop, make some changes to that car, see if they can make it better. But it doesn't look like it is a very dominant race car 
at the moment. We're still in the first run and there's still 19 to go in the stage, but it'll be interesting to see if they can make that car better throughout the race. Kevin, you mentioned the fact that he's won here 11 times. That's one of the reasons that the coach, Joe Gibbs, has been to victory lane here on 15 different occasions. He drove for him for a, such a long time, obviously. And the young guys uh, from Joe Gibbs Racing delivering today. Sammy Smith has worked his way up to fourth after starting outside the top 10. And John Hunter Nemechek losing a position. Riley Herbst has still been even impressive right earlier. Here. Still there. Still there. Uh -oh. Uh oh, that's not good. The right side. That's Leland Honeyman, 18 years old right. from right here in Phoenix, uh, covers, hanging off. making his Xfinity Series debut. Did a nice job in qualifying earlier. Put it in the show. Yeah, based upon what that looks like, I'm going to bet that the rear end slid out a little bit and he caught there that it thing on the fence. Well, there's going to be a debris caution. Uh, I think oh, so. oh, where'd it go? There it is. And there's the caution, and it comes out with 16 to go in the stage. We'll make a couple of laps, open pit road, and we could have opened the door for some strategy here. This is right on the edge of, of guys that might try to flip the stage. I mean, you can. You can. I, I don't think it's the race win and move by using your tires up right now, but I'd say if you're a car that's outside the top 10 right now, maybe this is an opportunity for you to Put some tires on it, maybe get some stage points. I don't know if you're going to drive all the way to the front with 16 to go, but I think you'll get some stage points probably. And then you're going to have to stay out and hopefully not fall back further than where you are right now if you were to make this call. Ah, I, I'm going to have to be pretty far back in the pack to, to want to put tires on right now. Most crew chiefs told me you would only do it in stage one. You can't compromise the give up into stage two and into that final stage, which can be a really long run. So if it happens, likely it would happen in this scenario. And, and I would also say most said the threshold is 10 laps to go into stage, not 15. So we may have too much time remaining for someone to take the gamble. But having said that, I mean, you look at it, we got 35 cars on the lead lap. So there's a, a lot of teams that would be in a position to give it a shot. Yeah, and the damage is already already done here, but you can see the damage over on the on the right side of the bumper. So there's there's either been contact with a car, or the the tail definitely had contact with the car after it got laid on the racetrack. Yeah, yeah it was Joe Graff Jr. that hit it. You know, Honeyman's such a good story because he's a, a high school senior and moved from Phoenix to North Carolina to further his racing career. So he's managing a lot. High school student during the week, racing on the weekends. And it just got away from him there. Yeah, and that's the fine line that Joey is talking about. You can see that black strip of resin and PJ1 that's been there for a while. I don't they actually didn't treat it this time around in, in one and two. So that is just previous grip that has been up there, but it's really hard to see how dirty it is. You just know that you start feeling your way up there, feeling your way up there, and sometimes you get too high and it slides in the fence just like that. That Phoenix dust. Yep. It piles up right between there and the fence and it's just got to get blown off and you don't want to be the first one. Pit road is open. Pit entrance is off of turn two. And most everybody going to bypass the pit lane. No one flipping the stage. Logano, you ought to be a crew chief. You know? I, uh, well, I don't know if you want that. <laughs>
takes the inside lane. Ten to go, stage one. Old tire restart here. 35 laps on their tires. They'll look a lot different. Sammy Smith, 18, goes inside. And he's going to jump up to the runner-up position, maybe. Justin Allgaier working in the outside lane off of turn two. Chandler Smith making it three wide in the 16. <laughs> Look at the racing going on mid-pack. Oh. Kyle Busch was 14th. We tighten things up. He gets a good restart. He could be in the top 10 to end the stage. He's 10th right now. Well, we see Justin Allgaier moving up the racetrack right there, and I think that's one thing that's a little bit of a disadvantage. When you are the leader of the race, like you were talking earlier, you don't get a chance to move around the racetrack and be in traffic, and Justin Allgaier has made some passes, and you see him immediately going up the racetrack and trying something different. Yeah, and he's giving it a good shot. You see the back end step out a little bit there in the middle of three and four. It's just going to hurt his run a little bit, but he's still going to be able to enter in on Cole, and he's probably going to move up again here and see if Cole blocks it. Roll the top again. Outside quarter, outside. Ooh, this is where it gets tight. Leave yeah, that's the still out there, outside. That's the toughest call on top of the spotter stand, as we saw earlier from from uh, the, the view up top. It's it's hard to see exactly where that car is when they're coming right at you. And once he gets to the outside of him, it's game over. I don't think Cole can defend that anymore. He had to try to keep him from getting at his top side. Uh, and this is for a stage win, seven to go. Playoff point, it matters a lot. And taking control of the race at a place where that is so important. Justin Allgaier gets the caution he needs. The field tightens up. He takes advantage on the restart. Seven now out in front of Cole Custer. Whoa. And Josh Berry goes around. Hold the brake. And you're good. Second caution of the day. He was running eighth when he went for a slide. You see him going down into turn three here. A little help. Yeah. Chandler Smith. Yeah, the guy in there pretty high. I don't know if he was going for the middle lane and the eight had it backed up to go to the bottom. They ran right in the back of him, Kevin. That's pretty much what happened, though. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to see it. And it's hard to tell right there if the left front tire was locked up. Turn three here is, you know, when you get in there hard, there are some bumps over the swells that, that Chandler could have locked up the left front tire because he hit him pretty good. That's a direct hit. Now, I'll, I'll go back to it, but strategy-wise, with 15 to go, caution comes out. Going to get a restart with 10 to go. We all agree, probably not going to see him on pit road. Maybe a little bit of a, a different game here because it's going to be a tight run to the finish, maybe right like a here. lap or two. Let's listen in on the 16 radio after the most recent incident. My ball got in deep because I thought KB was going to ship me. No worries. He thought his teammate was going to ship him. Yeah. I don't think that was going to happen. Hey, pit road is open, and here they are. Let's flip the stage, Regan. Well, Adam, the 20th, John Hunter Nemechek, he's been complaining about needing rear lateral grip with that car in the right rear. The one-third mark of the corner, very descriptive on what he needs and where. That means the back is sliding out too much. He can't get that right rear tire to grip. Josh? Just an update on the 18 of Sammy Smith saying his car is pretty good right now. He fired off three, definitely free into three, so they're going to try and get him something to help him out there. You got some drivers giving up some really good track position to come down pit road, get tires. They undoubtedly will stay out when the caution flies at the end of the stage, and then they will cycle to the front when all these other drivers decide to make a pit stop. What do you think of all that, Joseph? I like this call. Yeah. I like this call. Right? If, if you can't win the stage, put some tires on it. We're going to go back green with, what, two to go, maybe? Yeah. And and so you have two laps on your tires. I mean, you're going to have a bit of a disadvantage, but you're going to be pretty far back. I would say that. even, I mean, when we go green here, you're not going to go a lap down. Don't don't even fire off this. this I mean, well, I guess you got, you're racing other guys for those positions once we cycle through. So I think you got to run. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you're right. And, and I'm not sure how many. It looked like a lot of cars pitted there. They still might be able to get some points. Yeah, could be. Yeah, come up that's there. That's a lot newer tires. 42 laps on the other tire. <laughs> big time. That's a big deal. What Coleman? kind of? 
Yeah, this choose right here is going to be very interesting. Justin Al Algaier took the lead from the top side, but it was two laps after the restart. Cole Custer got cleared on the bottom lane, and even Sammy Smith almost cleared for second. It's going to be interesting to see which uh, lane Justin takes here. I would think the bottom's going to prevail. Well, he didn't do that. He took the top, which uh, I agree. I would have probably wanted the bottom there, but it is how he just got the lead. He He's driving the car. He probably knows more than us at the moment. I feel like watching this race back from the fall, early restarts, inside lane. The later the, the race went, start seeing the control car jump to the outside. Well, I think some of it might have to do with that car on the right side of you and, and trying to control where you're at on the racetrack, you know, because if Cole goes below onto the apron, Justin can be on the yellow line and then he's in control of Cole if he can just stay side by side because that car on the inside just gets so light. He's definitely got to chase him down there. Yes. To where he does that double zero does not clear the seven. And then the other piece of this is those guys on tires back there. <laughs> Ooh, they're going to be passing some cars. John, they're going to pass a bunch of them. Well, before the choose, John Hunter Nemechek was 16. So he, he's got to pass just, you know, five or six guys. I mean, he's taking the inside lane here, maybe seven to get to a stage point on those fresher tires. Two to go, outside lane, all guy are in charge. This to end stage one. The seven got a really good restart there. He's going to clear him. Two car looks good. 18 pushing the envelope in that outside lane. That's four wide. Yes, it is. Kyle Busch making it four wide. Custer is sandwiched there right beside his teammate. This is going to get tight right here. Final lap opening stage. I tell you, the racing here is spectacular. <laughs> when you get the track this wide, it's really the, the resin has really helped this racetrack. Look at Nemechek. I mean, he's up to seventh and could get two or three more spots before the stage ends. All guy are so good here over the years. A couple of victories. Started on the front row, got the lead on a restart late in the stage, and he is going to come back to the green and white checker flag and win stage one. That's his second stage win of the year, the fifth time he's done it in Phoenix. And he's the all-time leader in stage victories in the Xfinity Series. Creed, Sammy Smith, Herbs Custer, the top five. And keeping track at home, John Hunter Nemechek got back tonight. Tonight, the USA's biggest stars will lay it all the line as they take on Great Britain at the World Baseball Classic tonight, 9 Eastern on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Opening stage is complete at Phoenix Raceway for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Justin Allgaier able to get the win, looking for his third win here at the one-mile track in the desert, the place that will host the championship race when we come back later this year. And he's off to a hot start in 2023 with three consecutive top three finishes. Going back to 2005, Kevin, you're on the list. These are the five drivers that had started the year red hot. Well, that's pretty neat. I, apparently, they didn't have HD pictures from uh, uh, 2005 that they could put up here. So <laughs> uh, I'm glad I'm glad that's the case. But yeah, you know, it's like we talked earlier, getting off to a great start at the beginning of the season just gives you so much momentum. These West Coast races are tough on the teams. They're tough on you. And and it just it helps everything to get the first three or four races headed in the right direction. By the way, you got four consecutive top threes to begin the year 2005. Second. Second, second, and second. I'm sure you were fun wow. to live with back then, man. <laughs> They're pitting at the end of the stage. Here's Regan. Adam Daniel Hemrick in the 11 car, the very first pit box on pit road. Complaining about that race car being too loose, using a number system. He's a four loose in turns one and two, and a five and six loose in turns three and four. That's a lot. The two cars, Sheldon Creed, just a little bit too loose in and off of the corners, but he needs it to turn the middle a little bit more, so they're going to work on both those. Josh? O'Reilly Hurts in the 98, looking to keep that top 10 streak going. Right now having a little bit of issues with the turn, but they're going to stay with it. No real adjustments for them. Moving on to the seven of Justin Allgaier. So he feels good about, about the balance with that car right now. Your stage one winner and looking for his third win here in Phoenix. These are scheduled stops at the end of our opening stage. And keeping in mind, there were some drivers that pitted there just prior to the stage ending, so they will cycle to the front on those older tires. 
Among them, Sam Mayer, who, who finished the best of that group, who'd already made a pit stop. He came home eighth in the first stage. Let's talk to him. Hey, Sam, this is Kevin Harvick up in the Fox booth. Uh, you've got the premier starting spot for this restart with, with some good strategy from your team. Tell us how your car has been and tell us what you're thinking as far as lane choice and, and what happens down there in turn one on this next restart. Yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of craziness here on this restart because uh, there's probably about five cars on four lap of tires with some stickers coming. So you're definitely going definitely to see a lot of three, four wide racing here for the first four or five rows. And, our car is pretty good. I think our artillery Camaro has a lot of turn, that's for sure. We're definitely a little bit on the free side, but I know Barty Lindley on the box is going to get me hooked up for this next little thing here. All right, buddy. Well, good luck, and we'll be watching. I appreciate it, guys. Have fun in the booth. Man, this kid's electric. 19 years old from Wisconsin. Ended the race at Daytona on his lid. Back-to-back -to -back top seven finishes the last two weeks and looking good today. The fans are out in full force here at Phoenix. The day started great for Cole Custer on the pole, but some issues late in the stage and on this pit stop, Kevin. Yeah, as a driver, you want to get in there as hard as you can with that right front tire locked up so that the tire changer can focus on those lug nuts as quick as possible. But you see the tire changer uh, waving his arm right there. I think it went over the hose because Cole got into the box too deep with the back sliding and, and way, way, way forward in the box right there. All of those drivers that, that stayed out to finish the stage that just pitted, they're going to restart from 20th on back. The best of the bunch is Sammy Smith. Top 19 pitted at lap 41-42. So they're on older tires, but boy, have they got a ton of track position over drivers like Cole Custer. Let's listen to the double zero. Sorry, I went a little bit deep. Like a, I've never had it to where the rear tires just walked up like that. It feels like something was almost maybe wrong with those tires. They were so, they're still a little grim. Yeah, and this, this, this racetrack in itself is very unique because the pit boxes are almost polished, and they're, it's really easy to slide the tires into the pit box. But like Cole said right there, you could see the back of the car starting to slide to the left, and then the, all four tires were locked up. And that's one of those things, once they lock up, you're kind of long for the ride. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, look out. It's like, it's, it's like you're on a wet road. Look at some of these drivers in the top 10. Jeff Burton's up there, Jeremy Clements, Kaz Grala, Ryan Truex, Brett Moffitt, Josh Williams. Front row, Sam Mayer, John Hunter Nemechev. Stage two underway at Phoenix. Still down there. Your side only, trying to roll out here. Middle, your middle, clear up, clear up, in only. Haven't said Brandon Jones name much today, but here he is in the nine. That top lane is really coming in quicker. You see those drivers searching for it in the first quarter. Yeah, you know, we saw in the first run, it took 15, 20 laps for drivers to get up there. Now it's immediate. Nima check to the lead. Brett Moffitt goes break, for break, a slide break. right at the start finish line. Ooh. Oh, man. oh, that was close. 45 goes by. You can roll. That's unfortunate because here's a driver that played the strategy, got the track position. This is a team that has had a lot of speed, been impressive early in the season. See what happened here once again down into turn three. Three wide. You see Moffat right there in the middle. Looks like he, he's loose. Oh no, the 51 just barely looked like he just barely came down. And when it hits the right front like that, it looked like it hit the right front and it just takes the, the front of the car and turns it around. He was being scored 11th when he went for a slide. This was close. Turn four. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. Greg Galding missed him in the 08. 91 Garrett Smithley drove high to get around him. <laughs> Did you see him, Rick? Yeah, you see the, see the donut on the door right there where it looked like the 51 car just didn't really realize there was two cars below him and it just barely made contact. Hey, Sammy Smith from 19th to 14th on the restart. He's got those fresher tires. He could be on the move when we return. You want a glimpse behind the scenes of what these drivers are really like. The, Joey's on, always got that little grin, doesn't he? Not there. No, uh, here it is. Here it is. That's what I was talking about. And then, and then it turns to complete intensity. <laughs> He's talking trash. He's talking trash. I was just hanging out. And it, look at now Kevin's frustrated. He's now he's saying something, something about a karma train, probably. And. and 
Blame it on your spotter. Now I got to deal with. Now I blame I it on your spotter. Hey, you, you, <laughs> you can't make this up. You two qualified beside each other tomorrow. Starting 15th and 16th, you share row eight. Our coverage from the desert, 3 o'clock Eastern time on Fox or the Fox Sports app. We look forward to that tomorrow. And hope, should I should I stand in between you two? Do I need to separate you? Or are we going to? We get along nice? now. Okay, everything's fine. good. Yeah, <laughs> we weren't even in that that promo. We weren't even actually next to each other. That's the amazing TV work Fox does. That's a fun day, though. It is fun. It was a cool set. Yeah, it took. It was I, really I can't cool. imagine how long it took to put that set up. It's it's impressive. All right, let's do the choose here, and keep in mind as we work our way through. Varying strategies on tires. John Hunter Nemechek is uh, leading this thing. Does he go low or high? Goes low. And I was just telling Joey, it, it seemed like the John Hunter's car and uh, uh, Sammy Smith's car both fired off really well. And you know, I think as as we go to this restart, I think John John Hunter obviously knew that that his car worked really well in the bottom. And if you can keep the car on the bottom, you just have less distance to, to travel through one and two. And remember, you still got those guys on newer tires. Now, it might be a cycle on their tires, too. That might help the guys on the little bit older tires. But those guys, you know, two green flag laps less, uh, the guys that pitted at the end of the, uh, the first stage there compared to the guys that tried to flip the stage two laps before the end of the stage. So you, you got some varying uh, strategies here. It's only two laps newer tires. I still like the strategy that those guys did when they flipped the stage with only two laps on their tires. But hey, they're gaining ground on it. I mean, last restart to begin the stage, they were 20th on back. Now they're 15th on back. Those drivers on fresher tires. So could get pretty aggressive here early as it did the last time around. Just over 25 laps to go. Stage number two, Nemechek and Mayer on the front row. Austin Hill, two wins this year, making some noise in the 21. Jeb Burton in the 27, showing his hand. Ryan Truex there in the 19. So much going on, it's hard to talk about it. So much to see. Josh Berry had the spin. We're on board here with Kaz Grotto. This is our Toyota on board. I'm surprised. Heart rate at only 140 on a restart. I thought it would be up like 170, something like that. Barry goes by after his spin. They've been able to bounce back from problems the last two weeks for top fives, and here they are again. Well, I think he, he really benefited from that strategy flip to overcome the spin that he had earlier. And, and you know, I think as, as you go and, and look at what that did to the whole field it really changed the whole complexion of who the leaders are at the front of this race and who's controlling the race because this stage is short. This for fourth Jeb Burton's got it in the 27 Ryan Truex first of six starts in the 19 for Joe Gibbs racing driving by to take the uh, fifth position make it the fourth spot on track. Restarts always interesting Coleman. It is. And you know, two different strategies. The goal is you want to be the leader of your strategy. The guy that's executed that good right here is Daniel Hemrick. That restart, he went very far bottom on the twos through one and two, gained a lot of spots, while Sammy Smith, who was leading going into the restart, got boxed in on the top. Now, all of a sudden, they're trying to race to be the leader of their group and ultimately trying to get back towards the front. Those two drivers, the best of the bunch, as Coleman pointed out, that pitted at lap 50. Sammy Smith gave up some ground trying to get it back across the dog leg. Well, we heard Daniel Hemmick. We heard their pit report earlier on Daniel Hemmick that how, how loose his car was. And obviously they've made some adjustments to that car and, and he's been able to make some ground and good choices on the restarts to put himself in a better position. Hey, give a call behind him. Kyle Weatherman doing a nice job. 11th was top 20 last week in his first start for our motorsports and was top 15 here last year driving for Jesse Awuji. So I, I, I love what that kid brings to the table and getting it done again today. You know, going back to what you know Kevin's saying about the 11 car, da Daniel Hemrick, you know, his car may not be the best handling, but he put himself in a better spot because he had a good restart. That's how important these restarts are these days, is if you can have a good one, at least you can survive a little bit and keep some track position in hopes that you can keep making your car better on each pit stop. That's the driver's job. 
right? That you got to maximize every opportunity you got to try to maintain the track position you got to where your car can get fixed up. Talk about those drivers that pitted at lap 50, having to make up some ground here in the second stage. Kyle Busch third in that group. He's now scored 12th overall. Uh-oh. And we're going to get our fifth caution of the day. Connor Mozak in the 24. Okay, Driving the second entry for Sam Hunt Racing this weekend. First of 20 starts for that team. He was running 20th when he had his problem. This one looks hurt pretty bad. Been a tough day for him. Went out in qualifying. It got away from him. It ends up falling way down the speed charts. He knew he was going to have to work hard to get to the front today and had made his way into the top 20 and now this. Look off in the distance. See if you can pick it up. Yeah, you see him. It looks like, like he, he may got loose underneath somebody. Yeah, it looked like he was under Riley there in the 98 car and, and got loose. 92's Josh Williams sliding to miss him. And that's really typical here in turn one and especially in these cars you go down in there and you're too close to the car like Joey's touched on so many times and the back of that car just sails out so easy as you're trying to turn to an arc down into the corner. Justin Allgaier winner of stage one they make the pit stop lose the track position. He's back to 14th right now. My balance is pretty good right there but man this is frustrating. Yeah I'm sorry. Keep doing you. I appreciate it. It's not your fault buddy. Some of these guys just don't know how to drive, man. It's just super frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> I like how his crew just like, I'm sorry I put you back there. I'm like, I didn't mean to. <laughs> well, and that's that's really what these restarts open up to do. Like, it's it's how brave do you want to be? How low do you want to go? How high do you want to go? And, and, you know, I think as we've we've talked about early today is the restarts are so much of an opportunity to gain track position and, and, and kind of that low hanging fruit, especially if you have a car that's that's easy or drives better uh, through one and two to be able to make up those positions because some guys are on defense and some cars are on offense. And, and if you're the offensive car, you want to get as much as you can. Well, what do you do, Kevin? So like, if you're just an outguy, you got a very fast race car, right? It's one thing we talked about Daniel Hemrick being aggressive on a restart. Well, his car, his car is not real good. He has to be aggressive. But if you're just an outguy, your car is really fast. It won the first stage. It's, it's capable of, of really doing some good things and winning the race. You don't want to risk your car too much and throw away a chance of winning knowing that you're still going to have a long run car right yeah i think you i think you have to be uh as as ken schrader used to say you have to be cautiously aggressive yeah. and, and try to put yourself in what you think is the best lane on the restart in order to put you in the best position when you get through one and two to do to try to lose as little as possible minimize the damage because you know you can drive by them once they get strung out it's just trying to get through this hornet's nest on the restarts uh, for the first couple laps. That's probably where you hear Justin Algar's frustration is he knows just give me five laps and everything yeah. kind of strings out and then I can start picking them off and he's not getting that right now. So he's on one side of the strategy. On the other side, I mentioned it last restart, the driver that's won twice this year, Austin Hill. Second right now. Let's get to know a little bit more about the 28 year old out of Winston, Georgia. First car I owned was when I was 16 at a Chevrolet Camaro and had a lot of speeding tickets in it, so we got rid of that thing fairly quick. Something that people would probably be surprised to hear about is I'm very into 90s country. I love all the, the women, you know, country music, the Shania Twains and those types. I'll jam out in the car in them. I, I'll do it all the time. Well, if, you, if you're new to racing and you're just getting into it, I like to win, so if you like someone, someone that likes to win, you gotta cheer for me. What, what jumps out? Speeding tickets in the Camaro no, or no. The, the women of the 90s in country music? N neither. <laughs> I, I surprising. Him, I want to hear him sing. <laughs> well, I don't know if you want to do I that. Want, I want to see Kyle Busch's golf swing, and I want to hear Austin Hill sing. <laughs> the whole, maybe, maybe Austin Hill can sing to Kyle while he's trying to swing the golf ball. I don't know. I, uh, the hole's getting deep up here, Josh. What do you have? Yeah, yeah. while you guys are talking singing, the biggest thing Austin Hill needs right now is just to be able to charge the entry on three. He needs more security there. His team's telling him on three, that's where he's getting beat. So he could use some help for now, but until he can get back in and pit, he's going to have to work a little bit harder, guys. Well, he's got a couple choices. 
you know, you can you can not arc the corner as much. We talked earlier about the bumps into turn three. You can straighten that entry out, or you can try to put some front brake in your car in order to, to keep the back from swinging around. I mean, if you just turn some tunes up, everything's going to be all right anyway, yeah, right? Just start humming. Push Shania Twain on yeah. here. That's apparently who he likes. Crank some Shania on the restart <laughs> and let it you? fly. A whole new crank it up segment. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't give the folks in the truck any ideas, okay? <laughs> How many speeding tickets for the two of you? I, I've only had one in your life, in my life. How many have you gotten out of? Because you're Kevin Harvey. Only one that I remember. Only How about one? you, yeah. Well, that must mean he's had oh. a lot. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that bad. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not that bad. I'm, I'm pretty decent on the road. I'll say I'm decent. I, I've gotten maybe one or two speedy tickets. But for the most part, I'm pretty You're good. You're five. Five? <laughs> five? Yeah. Kids changed the game on that, by the way. You really, oh, I became a lot smarter. points. Smarter. Yeah. Oh, I just feel like when you have kids in the car, sometimes they, you know, they, they understand the sense of urgency and they oh, might get Oh, you're saying break. you get out of it more. Oh, I no, have. it was not like that for me. I just, I've slowed down is what I'm saying. Actually, on the streets. and if I said five, I'd bet the under on that. Restart, 16 to go in the stage. This time, Austin Hill on the front row with John Hunter Nemechek. It's Mayer behind the 20. Mayer, not with a good restart, able to stay with John Hunter. Still there. Ryan Truex just chipping away. And don't look now, but three of the top four from Joe Gibbs Racing, but Sammy Smith slides through. And Austin Hill to the outside of Nima. Check this for the lead. Austin Hill has so much of that RCR mentality. How about this? We've got a penalty on the restart on John Hunter Nemechek below the line before the start finish line. That, that yellow line not out of bounds like Daytona, Talladega, like what we'll see next weekend in at Atlanta, but you can't go down there on a restart until you cross the start finish line. Analyze this. We saw it with Allgaier last week. Yeah, absolutely. Now, John Hunter Nemechek was the leader. And what the rule is, is it, the, the restart, it has to be established above the yellow line. You cannot cross that yellow line until you get to the start finish line. And you see he just misjudged it by a little bit. Um, and a lot of times that penalty is called on maybe the third or fourth place car. But it's, it's, but it's an easy call. That's yeah, two weeks in a row we've seen it. Yeah, and, and it's a super easy call for NASCAR. It's cut and dry. You can't go below the yellow line before the start finish line and, and that's just something that I think we especially here when you want to get to the bottom of the racetrack so fast to defend cut the dog leg that sometimes you just lose track of it just kind of a mental error really I mean is that, is that what it is that you I mean it is but it's super easy to do there's the crew chief Ben Bayshore who's now got his work cut out for him because he, he had established the track position going to the final stage maybe another stage victory and, and now you're going to lose it all here and teammates of Nemechek racing for second. Sammy Smith going to get the runner-up spot driving underneath the 19. Maybe not. Truex hanging tight. Barry back in the mix. We talked about him after a spin. They use a little strategy. He's in the top five. Mayer is there. And Kyle Busch up to sixth. I've really been impressed with Sammy Smith. I think he's done a good job the first several weeks of the season here. He's, ran, he's run Arca straight to the Xfinity Series and, and managed the season very well and, and had fast cars and, and learning a lot racing at the front. And sometimes that experience is hard to come by because you don't get to race at the front, but he's getting to race at the front of the pack and, and learn how to race for, for wins. Absolutely. I mean, he's going to make mistakes. He's, he's a kid. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's why he's here. He's, that's right? what this is for. He's in a great race car, like you said, Kevin. He's going to put himself in position. Oh, it's a little tight. Off the corner there. This is what we're talking about. Justin Algar was the fastest car in the racetrack in the first stage. Trying to get his way back up there, right? His competition, Sammy Smith, with tires, same situation. He got all the way to second. That's 13th on back. By the way, John Hunter Nemechek made his pit stop. He did not lose a lap. That is significant. We'll keep it side by side as we go to break. Ram owners have heart for being fearless, determined, and bold. That's why it's time for you to be a Ram.
Now, with 0.9% financing for 60 months, get an average 11600 in finance savings on our most popular models. Honey, garlic, two of Mother Nature's finest ingredients. We put them in a sweet and savory sauce that'll give your taste buds a talking to. Mama knows best. All new Honey Garlic, for a limited time at Buffalo Wild Wings. Okay, cut it. Bring my Yahtzee here. When you need parts, eBay Motors ensures a guaranteed fit. Let's see, you'll need headlights oh. and the bumper. At least you can skip the car wash. Just go to eBay Motors. The check means a guaranteed fit. Let's ride. Research shows people remember ads with a catchy song. So to help you remember that Liberty Mutual customizes your home insurance, here's a little number you'll never forget. Did you know that Liberty Mutual customizes... They're just gonna live in there? Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. One year ago in Phoenix, we had four cautions for the entire race. Josh Berry spins for a second time. That's caution number six. And we know we're gonna get another one when the stage ends here in a few laps. Here's what happened. He was running in the top five. That's his teammate. Oh, man. Huh. Yeah, there was a couple laps before that where I saw Sam get into the back of, of Josh over here in turns three and four, and I didn't really think of it, anything of it, but he got into him again right here and spun him out. Things that make you go, hmm. There's no bump drafting at Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Josh Berry would agree with that. <laughs> now, hey, I, I want to go back. On, on the way to break, I said John Hunter Nemechek stayed on the lead lap. So now, do, do you pit here and try to play some, some games? And ga I mean, maybe a lot of people pit. We'll, we'll see what happens this late in the stage. But flipping the stage becomes a real viable option for them to try to regain some of the track position after that penalty, depending on what everybody else does. I mean, possibly for the whole field. There's only six to go here. You know, you, Say you go green with what four to go? Yeah, three, three to go. Right? Yeah, probably probably it three. Went pretty, it, it went pretty bad for everybody who didn't pit last time. Yeah, I think you're going to see a lot pit. I think he's 37th, and and right in front of him, Barry 36. Crazy. Never would have believed those two would be that deep in the running order, with five to go, in stage two. Well, and to your point with with the strategy here for John Hunter, I think you just do the opposite. Right. You know, if they all pit here, stay out, maybe have a little fresher tires, maybe that adds up to something. I think you just do the opposite. I thought he was going to win a stage and now scratching their head and trying to figure out what's next. Pit roads open and, and there goes the idea of him flipping the stage and gaining track position because everybody's coming here, Regan. Adam, it is absolutely busy down here right now. The 19 of Ryan Truex. That race car is pretty good for him right now. He just needs a little bit of turn in the middle of the corner so he can get to the gas pedal a little sooner, make the straightaway longer. And the one car, Sam Mayer, he came on the radio, said he felt like the team, his teammate of the A car checked up in front of him. That race car right now is fast. He just can't pass anyone because he's too loose off. Josh? Well, the 21 of Austin Hill, he's been battling the same issue all day long, just a little too loose in the center. So they're going to try and tighten him up as far as the 18 of Sammy Smith. They came on the radio, said they really didn't want this caution, didn't want to have to give up the track position, but they chose to pit anyway, guys. The race off pit road, and boy, are we going to have a fun restart to end stage two. Well, we already had to race there, but I, I will say, Justin Allgaier, elects Ooh. to stay on the racetrack. And there you see the numbers. Austin Hill holds serve, Daniel Hemrick plus four, Sammy Smith lost one, Kyle Busch picks up a position, and Ryan Truex goes two in the wrong direction. What do you see, Coleman, as we look to the end of this second stage? Well, you know, we had a lot of caution field uh, restarts here and old tire restarts. It's interesting. Sammy Smith made the most gain up with those new tires. He did so by taking the bottom, going all the way up against the inside wall through one and two. Right here, it looks like he's probably going to restart around row three or four. I expect him to take the bottom, get down there really far, try to clear as many people off a of two, and I think he's going to have a shot here to get the stage win still. Let's check in uh, with seven team radio staying out. They will be the race leader when we return to the green flag. I know 
Your track position is important, but trust me when I tell you, I'll get it back for you. Yeah, 10-4. I'll take the stage points. we got a long way to go here, buddy, and you got a really good race car. We just got to keep our head through it, okay? Yes, sir. Now, I will say this. They're, they're going to lose a ton of track position here, but you could get your second stage win of the day. It's another playoff point. That's 10 more points. And we, we're we not even halfway yet, so there is a long way to go. I, I know it's a hard pill to swallow, and it's going to be really tough when we return to the green flag to begin that final stage, and they're deep. But we we do have a long afternoon in front of us. Joey, Joey thinks I'm crazy. Yeah, I don't yeah. like it. <laughs> I don't like it. I know they're trying to make themselves feel good about this one, but they may get a stage win. Hopefully they do, because that's that's what they went for. A total points move right here. I believe they give it away their chance to win, or at least they've made it a lot, lot harder for themselves to drive through the whole field with two lap newer tires and all the rest of them. Hey, those Please. guys, Austin Hill was sixth before the choose, and he was the first one off of pit road. So we'll see what kind of ground he can make up. He chooses the inside lane, so he'll restart in the fifth position. Kyle Busch, Daniel Hemrick, Sammy Smith, all on new tires as well. Two laps remaining in the stage. Yeah, and watch Kyle Busch here. He's four rows back, but he's been going all the way to the top, and he does it again, and he goes all the way to the top in, in turns one and two. So we'll see how that works out. Four wide, turns one and two. Again. Allgaier gets the top spot. What a mess on these restarts. This is where they get tight on the exit of the corner. Oh, well, they all make it. Now from Austin Hill on back, you've got a lot of drivers racing to be in control of this race for the final stage. Hill's got that spot right now. One to go. Stage number two. Allgaier trying to get the sweep. I think Algar is looking pretty good. The battle is second, third, fourth all right here. I mean, that's, that is huge, too. So you can have that number one spot to begin the final stage. Austin Hill appears to be in line for that. For Algar, he's going to sweep stage one and stage two. All good. And he knocks it out again at Phoenix. Sixth stage win here in the desert. Well, that's what you hope, right? If you're going to take the gamble of staying out and losing all the track position, you better go win the stage because that's what you put all in for, right? To get the stage point and the playoff point. All guy are having a good day, but his work is cut out for him. We'll see what he can do in the final stage coming up. So it's back with the bloodline and on a collision course with Sami Zayn. Plus, after a controversial outcome, Drew McIntyre and Sheamus clash to find out who will face Gunther at WrestleMania. An all-new Friday Night SmackDown, live at 8 Eastern, 7 Central on Fox. Looking forward to SmackDown on Friday night. They look like they're ready to go in the <laughs> ring. Macho Tag man. team champions of the world right there. <laughs> yeah, they got those macho man hey, they're ready. They got shirts and everything. Hey, here are the stage points for the day. Justin Allgaier, best of the bunch. Eighth time in his career that he's swept both stages. Five times he's failed to go on and win the race. And, and we know and he's going to have to roll his sleeves up here today to get it done. It's, it's amazing. It. You, you go from stage sweeper to underdog into the, the final stage of the race, right? I mean, it's definitely a, it's a points play, right? And there's nothing wrong with this strategy. You know, he's going for for a ton of stage points. He has two playoff points that he could put in the bank. He knows he has that, right? That, that The risk is where you're going to finish at the end of this thing. But either way, he's getting two playoff points. If you could do that every race, you'd have a really good season. So it's not a bad day no matter what from this point for him. Pit Road, kind of a, a lonely place, Josh. It is right now. Let's get an update on the 78 of Anthony Alfredo, one of those guys that decided to stay out during the caution. Got some much-needed stage points, five points on the day, running six when he came in for that break. And then getting to the seven of Justin Allgaier, or another guy that stayed out during the caution, but it paid off sweeping stages one and two. And now he said, we gave up the track position, but I get to do what I want to do, and that's being aggressive the rest of the race. I'll say this, you, you go to the last couple of weeks, had the, the pit road, the, the tie, loose wheel, had the pit road unscheduled in Fontana, lost a lap, came back, finished top three. Restart violation last week, comes back to finish second. So Allgaier's been doing this the last couple of weeks. And Sammy Smith, a bunch of stage points today, 15 of them. And he's going to be uh, third in line when we do the choose here, Joey. Let's uh, dial up Sammy Smith. Sammy Smith, Joey Legato in the Fox booth, you got us? Yeah, 10-4, got you guys. 
Hey, man, we, we've had a fun time watching you. It looks like your car is really fast. It fires off really good. We've been talking about how you've been going all the way to the bottom, especially with those newer tires. How's that hot rod feeling? Yeah, my Toyota GR Supra uh, is really good. Uh, hopefully we can get some long green flag runs. I think we're really good in the long run here. So hopefully we can uh, keep this up and uh, we'll get ourselves a win. Well, you got yourself some track position now. And you can see the front. Seems like you've been battling to get track position most of the day. So good luck. Four, thank you. 18 years old from Johnston, Iowa. Moved to North Carolina. He's a high school senior, taking classes online, lives by himself so he can do what he loves, race on the weekends, and he's got a great backdrop to do it this weekend in Phoenix. Just over halfway home, just under halfway home, here with round four from the NASCAR Xfinity Series at Phoenix Raceway. Austin Hill, the race leader. We have had so much strategy in this race, thanks to seven cautions already as we get set for the final stage. And a lot of conversation on 16 radio. Chandler Smith, 12th, as we get ready for the choose here. Hey, Chandler. I mean, it's a real motor in that car. It's not like one of them boat motors you rode, drove in the truck. So you'll be fine. We'll talk about the water temperature on Monday. I know it's very frustrating. You'll get back up there. Boat motor? I don't know. I think he's referring to the spec engines in the yeah. truck series. Yeah, he's, so he's, he's got he, the big ponies. Giving up there. him some big power. Okay. You can't go. It's hard to go a week without not listening to a Chris Rice clip. Always, yes. <laughs> he always makes the reel. He is definitely head of entertainment at College Motorsports. Ready for the final stage. What strategies are going to play out here, Coleman? Yeah, you know, I, I really expect us to see a lot of green flag racing now that the strategies have kind of settled in. Look for Sam Mayer to be one of the first guys to push the resin in turns one and two. Right before that contact with Josh Berry, he was really starting to work it in and uh, and work in the pull down lane. I'd look for him to be one of the first guys to start making that resin work and trying to make a, a run to the front here. His teammate, Justin Allgaier, as we know, sold out, won the stage, going to restart 30th. We've had a lot of cautions today. He probably is, is going to need some well-timed cautions throughout the final stage if he's going to get to the front. Kyle Busch up there in the mix. Austin Hill takes the inside lane. And we're rolling in the final stage. How about that aggressive move? Kyle Busch, he'll take over the lead as we head to turn two. Yeah, and those skid marks aren't down on that apron for no reason because that's what happens when you don't get quite a good enough start. The guy behind you in third gets underneath you and... If you don't give him room, you get spun out. Austin Hill first to fourth all right. on that exchange. Kyle wanted that clean air to get up front, had the run, able to go three wide. And there's Sammy Smith right there. It's like he's driving his old car. He said, I'll, I'll give me some of Kyle Busch. Sammy Smith in the 18, Austin Hill fighting back, and Daniel Hemrick right there. Kyle's going to have a good run off the corner here, off the top side. That's something we saw the 18 do there, Kevin. He, he was four tires down on the flat in three and four. That that's allows you to turn through the center good, but it gives you a hard time getting off the corner. And he's giving Kyle another shot out of here. He has such a fast race car, the 18 there. You see this time he doesn't go four tires down there. Well, I'll take that back. He does. <laughs> yeah, he just waited till the middle. And the one thing that, that Kyle is doing in his car is, is like Coleman said earlier and we talked about earlier, is he's way up the racetrack. And, and I think the 18, is just hitting his marks on the bottom of the racetrack, letting the car do the work. And Kyle, to me, looks like he's driving his race car and trying to manipulate it as much as he can. The 18 is doing a great job, but his car is handling much better naturally. And hey, those Toyotas from Joe Gibbs Racing really good today. Sammy Smith out front, Ryan Truex is sixth, and right behind him, John Hunter Nemechek, who got that penalty on the restart, makes the pass through, stays on the lead lap, and here he is fighting for a position inside the top five, we look at our Toyota top performers, and, and, and it brings some problems today for that group. But boy, they're fighting through them and making something happen. I, how did John Hunter get all the way back up? I, I missed this somewhere, the, the, all these restarts, but he must have had some amazing restarts. Because remember, he had that restart violation. He went 
almost down a lap. He had an amazing right? was, restart there. <laughs> yeah, that was a little too amazing. <laughs> He's come all the way back up here. It's a pretty impressive run back through the field in a short amount of time. No doubt. Because now you've I mean, you got over 90 laps to go in this race. Yeah, and those are the things that you have to do in order to win a championship because there are going to be things happen. How do you recover from the adversity? How do you get back through the field? And, and those guys uh, in the Gibbs camp today have good race cars and are able to, to make passes and make their way back forward. And as a driver, if you're the one that made the mistake, Oh, you better oh, make yeah. up for it, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I think there's a little extra motivation there from John Hunter. <laughs> On board, Kaz Grala, this is the Toyota onboard camera, bottom left, heart rate monitor, and he's pacing at 160 plus beats per minute. Well, it's getting hotter inside those race cars, and that heart rate is starting to maintain a little bit higher than what it was earlier today. Grala's 14th. Top five, Sammy Smith, Kyle Busch, Daniel Hemrick, Austin Hill, Sam Mayer. We step aside just past halfway. This is Side by Side Break on FS1. Much has changed over our 75 years, but the thing that never does, the anticipation, the holding of breath until that first green flag drops and the crazy journey begins all over again. If you could travel 75 years from now, you might not recognize much at all. But one thing will never change. That feeling you get when the race begins again. For 46 years straight, more of you have trusted Ford F-Series trucks to help save the day. Stretch the weekend. Haul. Or tow. Just about anything, anywhere. That's because they're built Ford Tough. And it's why Ford F-Series are America's best-selling trucks 46 years straight. And for that, we thank you. Because this isn't just about our capability. It's about yours. Here's a little tip for all you aspiring fishermen. The easiest way to catch wild, humongous, already deep-fried fish is with $5 in your wallet and a brown paper Arby's bag. Arby's, we have the meat. I'm your glitchy Wi-Fi, and I've decided, well, if you're on vacation, I am too. <laughs> Which means your smart home isn't so smart. Sprinkler on. And now I'm sending mixed signals to your garage. But if you haven't bundled your home in auto coverage, trying to unpack this isn't going to be too much fun. Hey, check the router. So get all state. You better protect it from mayhem while saving up to 25% when you bundle home and auto. La -dee -da -dee -dum, what's the name of that show? The Mass Singer! Fox Wednesday, everything's A-OK. -okay. Hockey time! When our favorite friends come to play. Woo! Plus, two new costumes with voices bigger than Big Bird. Baby, you're no good. You're too good! I'm out of here! Oh, no! Sesame Street Night on an all-new Masked Singer, Wednesday on Fox. Brought to you by the letter M. The Masked Singer! The action doesn't get much closer than a weekend at Richmond Raceway. Just 10 minutes from downtown, this track packs it in. Get your tickets now at richmondraceway.com. 88 laps remaining for the NASCAR Xfinity Series in Avondale, Arizona. We're live at Phoenix Raceway with Kevin Harvick, Joey Logano. I'm Adam Alexander, your race leader, 18-year-old Sammy Smith, driving for Joe Gibbs Racing. Top 10 run here last year in November. And by far and away, having his best run of his young career here today. You look at what Joe Gibbs Racing has been able to do in the Xfinity Series at Phoenix. Truly remarkable. The 15 wins are the most all time. One shy of what they've done at Texas. 16 wins at Texas Motor Speedway, the most by any organization at a single racetrack. But the laps led and the stage wins, the list goes on and on. And, and then you look at the last five years and what JGR has done as an organization winning at least one time in each of the last five with five different drivers bell in 18 kyle bush in 19 brandon jones got it done in 20 in fact the 2020 win by brandon jones a one two three for joe gibbs racing hemrick wins the championship here in 2021 ty gibbs did it of course when we were here in november and I'm going to tell you what, it, it's remarkable what they've been able to do at this racetrack with so many different drivers. Well, the thing that I love about the, the Joe Gibbs Racing Xfinity program is the fact that 
the drivers really are working on themselves because the equipment is what it needs to be to run up front, win races, and do what it needs to do. So for a kid like Sammy Smith, you know that it's you against you in a lot of situations in order to make yourself what you need okay, to be in order to win. There's no excuses That's when right. you drive a car like that. You, you better go out there and find a way to be successful. Joey, you won seven times in the 18. Kyle Busch is second. He, of course, won in the 18. So did Daniel, Daniel Hemrick who's up there in the top five. What's up with our race leader, Josh? Yeah, just an update on the mindset of Sammy Smith right now. He asked the team, do I need to change lines right now? And they said, no, keep running the same line you're running. You're doing fine. He said the 10 behind you and Kyle Busch, he's going to use up his stuff. Just keep hitting your marks. And by the way, he's been going about 95%. So they told him to save his stuff. That's what he's been doing right now, Coleman. Yeah, let's hope he is saving his stuff. You know, Kyle Busch is really starting to chip away at that lead. Seems like over the last two laps since those uh, comments were made, Sammy Smith picked it up a little bit. My question to Kevin and Joey in the booth, how quick do you want a young driver like that who's really never had no experience of moving around, trying to find that extra speed to just get up there and kind of see what it's going to feel like or what am I going to have to do when it's time to defend that when he, when he does get closer? Well, for me, I like to grind away on what's working. And if, if I were on the pit box or in the spotter stand of Sammy Smith, I'd tell him to quit splitting the apron down there <laughs> because I would I would tell him to try to get the, you know, work on the right sides of the car on the apron so that you don't get that big gap with the splitter uh, underneath the car in, at the entry of the corner. Go across the apron and then try to go back to partial throttle and run the right side tires on that line all the way through the corner. But I, I think Right now, it's just grind away at what's working for you. You're, you're, he was three tenths faster than Kyle the lap before, and, and it's working for him. So how do we just uh, refine what we're doing? Keep doing what you're doing. Yep. If, it's, if it's working, keep, keep doing you. Now, when they start catching it, that's when, you know what, start moving around before he gets there, right? If you have a two-second lead and all of a sudden Kyle Busch starts reeling him in, you know, a, a tenth or two a lap, you know what, maybe take a couple laps to try his lane out and see if it's working. Be ready to move up the racetrack because you're going to most likely have to play defense. And if you can play defense in more than one lane, you have a real shot at winning it still, even though you may not be the fastest anymore. I still look at I still look at moving up the racetrack as a crutch. Yeah. If your car will work with the left side tires on the yellow line here, you're in a better position than the guys that are moving all over the racetrack. Let's go to Regan update on Sheldon Creed. Add in the two car Sheldon Creed, of course, very good early on in this race. Not as good right now, and perhaps a frustrated driver behind the wheel. And that happens. You know, you, you, get, you get frustrated as, as a driver, and it took me a long time to learn that pushing that radio button and, and you know, saying things that that feel like they're the right thing to say, just sometimes just make everybody else more frustrated. So Sheldon's a, a little bit frustrated in the car and, and you know, I think, um, you know, looking for something that'll that'll make his car better. But they, the sun has come out and the track conditions are changing. Uh, the cars are all around the racetrack and, and really, you know, the, the, the thing that they need to settle him down and do is, hey, let's look around on the racetrack. The last three laps, we've just run through the middle of the racetrack. Let's move up higher. Let's move down lower. Let's let's try a different line. I've always felt, though, this race has different personalities, stage one, stage two, versus what you see in the final stage. It's like there's all this sense of urgency, and we saw that with all the cautions in the first two stages, both 45 laps. Now you get to the final stage, it's almost like everybody hits the reset button, calms down, and you play the long game, realizing that, that you got to make it to the checkered flag. And, and hey, by the way, everybody does have to make a, a pit stop here, so you know, you got to keep that in mind. Uh, as we head down the road in this final stage. And you see right there on the front nose of the number 10, Kyle Busch, no there's some garbage on the grill there. And, you know, he lost a spot to Austin Hill. You, you wonder... Still there. Yeah, they're talking about it. He must be overheating. You wonder Still there right now. If he gave up that spot to try to clean off his grill and was not successful on cleaning his grill off, the fact that he could stay that closer to 21 tells me he's probably done this on purpose and he's trying really hard to get as close as he possibly can to the back of the 21 which might happen right here yeah he got there it goes closer. there <laughs> it's gone. It's gone. sometimes arrow pulls it off but when you go bumper to bumper that just knocked that debris right off the front end Kyle Bush had given up the second spot and we'll see if he can cross over here and take it back from Austin Hill <laughs> he's gonna get right back around him here 
shows that car does still have some strength in it for sure. But doing that, look how far back he is from the leader of Sammy Smith now, right? He's 3.6 seconds back now. And, and look who's in fourth. I mean, what a day for John Hunter Nemechek. They had an issue in practice. You see the tape on the nose, hit, hit another car. They weren't sure how they would qualify, but he's able to, you know, put it up there in the top five in qualifying. Had a good race car, and, you know, a lot of give and take with the strategy, but then got the lead, had the restart penalty. Somehow did not lose a lap. And, and they really have not played strategy to get the track position back. I mean, he just got a fast car, and he's passed a lot of people today. Absolutely. I mean, I think the recovery that they've had so far, they got to be proud of what they got. Uh, talk about a rough day. You have damage in practice. You get a restart violation, and, and you motor back through the field. Like, he didn't do it on tire strategy and doing anything besides a fast race car. But, but you said it, Kevin. If you're going to win a championship, these are the kinds of days you have to weather the storm. They have done it. Sammy Smith, his teammate, is out front. He's led 25 laps here today. A feeling this dynamic is invite only. Fortunately, you're invited. Experience the exhilaration of the performance line at the invitation to Lexus sales event. Out here, you're more than just a landowner. You're a gardener, a landscaper, a hunter. Because you didn't settle for ordinary, same goes for your equipment. Versatile, powerful, durable Kubota equipment. More goes into it, so you get more out of it. Sunday on Fox. Ready to duel in the desert. I'm gonna light it The NASCAR Cup Series fires into Phoenix. It's here, in the Valley of the Sun, that the best of the best look to rise again. Yeah! NASCAR Cup Series. Phoenix, Sunday at 3 Eastern on Fox. There's a thin line in the NASCAR Xfinity Series between winning and losing, between being the future and being past, between headlines and tailspins, between making history and being it, between the sweet taste of victory and the fumes of defeat. In the NASCAR Xfinity Series, there's a thin line between being a name they know and being a name they'll never forget. Weeknights on FS1, Race Hub is your home for the only daily NASCAR show. Built by the experts for the diehard fans. Covering the stories, the drama, and the excitement. Yeah! NASCAR Race Hub, weeknights at 6 Eastern on FS1. Don't do it. Headed toward the fourth quarter of our Xfinity Series race here at Phoenix. 68 laps to go. We look at our top 10, and we got three teenagers, now two up there in the top 10, and a 20-year-old in Chandler Smith. This is uh, this is pretty impressive how these young drivers have come to the forefront in this series. I never thought I'd see the day that Kyle Busch was uh, the old guy. Yes. 37, that's a big number, right? Hey, while we were away, the old guy putting it on the edge here a little bit. Believe me, it happened. See Kyle up top there. Race at Austin Hill. Oh, a little, boy. A little loose. That's pretty good contact. You see that moved the spoiler there a little bit. Yeah, and that car is just not quite right. Yeah, it just, Kyle is manhandling that car to to make it to make it go fast by putting in uh, in spots on the racetrack that are making good time for, for the car but it's on the edge of out of control as you can see right there with the contact but we said at the beginning of the show that's why colleague put kyle bush in there to try to help them get better they know that phoenix is one of their weaknesses is one of their weaker racetracks 
and we talked at the top of the show how this is going to be the most important race for four teams when you get back here in the fall. They have to get better. It makes perfect sense to put an experienced driver like Kyle Busch in there that's going to give them the feedback and tell them where they're off so they can go to work and make sure they have something when they come back. Hey, we were on board there with Riley Herbst. She's had a good day looking for another top 10 finish and then top 10 every race so far this year. And, and going back to the colleague thing, all three of their drivers in the top 10 today, all three finished top 10 both races here last year. This was not always their best track. As I said earlier, they're starting to make some gains on it. And I talked about Riley Herbst. Man, he, he's grown up a lot as a race car driver. We've seen him make tremendous strides. This has been a pretty good track for him. Still into three too hard. Trying to get to the top five here. Well, the biggest thing that, that, that we talked with Riley about is, OK, we're running six today. So how do we finish somewhere around sixth in order to maximize our day? If you have a fifth place car, let's finish fifth. And being able to achieve that sometimes has been off. difficult in the past. But he's made good strides this year and just grinding away and, and getting the finishes that, that you have in the car that particular week. Well, it's fun watching his in-car, too. He drives in the corner really hard, which means he's got great entry stability and center turn to be able to pack air on a car in front of him trying to make the pass as the All caution right. comes out here. It's going to be caution number eight. And the window is now open to go the distance. You're easily inside the window. Ray Galding, the reason for the caution in the 08, driving for Bobby Dodder. So it's pretty cut and dry. You have one set of tires left. You're in your window. No brainer. You come down and pit here. And, and pit stop's going to be enormous in, in deciding who's in control and how you finish this thing. What? I mean, this is your last set of tires. There's still 61 laps to go. Do you think you stay? I, I, and save them. I, I think if you're the leaders, you probably come. But... I, I don't know. I mean, I, I'd be open to a little gamble here. Maybe you can get 30 laps on your tires and get another caution with 25 or 30 laps to go. And you got one set hanging. Ah. 30, 30 cars on the lead lap, which introduces us to some drivers that have the potential to do it. You see the AMR safety team getting to Greg Alding, and you can tell by his body language that was a really, really hard hit. Yeah, and that's got all the makings of a right front tire going flat. So uh, based upon it probably knocked the breath out of him a little bit there as, as the as the car hit the fence. But uh, a lot of times what happens here is is the right front tire gets really hot and the bead goes away uh, as 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 you as you get deep into a run. See, there he is coming into the screen. He's already into the wall there, but we're well, carrying a lot of speed there in, into turn one. And while you don't see the full impact of the hit, it, you know. Um, that that's one that uh, take your breath away. Good to see Gray out of the car, helmet off, and walking under his own power, under his own power to the ambulance, and he'll uh, have to go. Uh, the safety truck actually is going to take him to the infield care center. So we'll see if any strategy plays out here, and and who might be willing to roll the dice, save a set of tires, and hope for a late caution. That the problem is. And, and typically we get long green flag runs to end this thing. If you elect to stay out and save tires and you don't get the caution, woo, it's going to be a long run. But hey, I, th there are some drivers that would be in position maybe to take that shot with so many on the lead lap. Well, and the other part, hard part here, hard part here, is the fact that track position is important in order to get going. And the restarts wind up being so crazy, you can make some ground, but if you get too far back there, it's hard to make ground quickly. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to be the only car that is on its own strategy. That, that's what Kevin's saying here. Right? If you if you get a caution, the perfect time caution, and there's 25, 30 laps to go, and you're the only one with a fresh set of tires, that all sounds well and good. But if you got to start last, it's not as great as it as you think it is. Right? It, it's, there's a lot of cars to pass, right? You hope that you know maybe the field splits or something like that. Then. If you're the leader of that strategy, you're looking pretty good. And the teams will have all this data down on, on the pit boxes and, and back at the shops. And they'll have a reference sheet to say, OK, nine times out of 10, the race goes to the end of the end of the, you know, from from here to the end. Or this race has a lot of cautions at the end. And sometimes you just got to play the statistics that you have from the past races. Either way, it's a gamble here. Either way. Right. It's a risky call no matter what you do. There's no guarantee. This is the final set of tires. 
Hey, as, as we ride around, some pretty good stories from 11th on back, and, and we've hit him a couple of times today, but Kyle Weatherman having a nice afternoon in 11th, second straight week. He's been driving that 0-2 for our motorsports. Uh, I mentioned earlier in the broadcast, top 15 driving the 34 last year for Jesse Awuji, so it's impressive what Weatherman's doing, and I feel like this kid overachieves any time he comes out and races. Right behind him, Justin Allgaier, and, and we know that they've had, you know, various things play out today that have, have put them behind the eight ball, but this caution helps tighten things up, good pit stop, and they will return themselves to the conversation of having an opportunity to win for a third time in Phoenix. Behind him, Brandon Jones. I feel like they fought a lot today, but his new teammate at Junior Motorsports is 13th. In, in fact, 12th, 13th, and 14th, all Junior Motorsports drivers. You have Allgaier, you have Jones, and then the eight of Josh Berry, Ryan Truex in the top 15, and right behind him, Parker Kligerman. They had a brake issue wrecking qualifying, had to go to a backup, and the turnaround time today was like two and a half hours. I went down in the garage between qualifying and a race, and they were thrashing, working hard to get the backup ready, a backup that probably they thought they'd never race because of three consecutive weeks on the West Coast. They've got them in position now for a top 15, so a great effort by Patrick Donahue and everyone at Big Machine Racing. 58 to go, pit road is open. Let's see how it plays out. Here they come, Regan. Well, Adam, the 10 car, Kyle Busch, as he always is very detailed on exactly what he wants for the race car and what the car is doing everywhere. Right now, he said the right sides just give up too quick. There's no longevity in that race car. It turns good for 15 laps and then quits turning for him. So he needs help with that. The one car, Sam Mayer, no changes for him. He says the car is good, just a little snug in the center, meaning a little tight in the center. He wants to leave that alone, though, Josh. Well, the 18 of Sammy Smith led 40 laps so far. I'm looking for that first career win. In order to do that, he needs a little more drive up in terms of the 21 of Austin Hill. Looking for his third win in the first four races. He just needs a little more rear security if he's able to catch the leader. Race off pit road, and we said how big pit road could be in this situation. And the first out here is going to be Austin Hill. He gains a spot, so does Kyle Busch. Sammy Smith, the race leader, loses to. You like NASCAR history? How about Xfinity Series regulars to win two times in the first three races? It's only happened on a few occasions. Sam R. did it mid-80s. 1995, Chad Little, who's now with NASCAR, got it done. Austin Hill joined the group by winning last Saturday in Las Vegas. And Austin Hill leading here today. Just over 50 laps to go. He's one of our eight different leaders, Austin Hill is. That ties a Phoenix record. There has been a lot of give and take at the front. Well, that, the give and take is, is going to keep getting less and less <laughs> as there's 54 take, laps take, to take, go. Take, 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 <laughs> You got Kyle up there. He sees a chance to win the race if you get clean air, possibly. He's shown to have some speed. You know, Sammy Smith, who had a, you know the fastest car, he's third now. You see him, he's on the, the second row on the outside. John Hunter Nemechek right there. I mean, everyone sees a chance of victory. Green flag, 53 laps to go in Phoenix. I think it was Riley Herbst had a big wiggle. Yeah, it looked like the seven car got in the back, in back of him a little bit. And Chandler Smith, as we've seen over the first several weeks, makes some big moves on the restarts really at any point during the race. He's been three wide in the middle, up top, down low. And no fear, no there he fear. Goes again. Side by side for the lead. I mean, this looks like the restart a couple of times a go around with the Joe Gibbs cars racing side by side in that second row. Sammy Smith looking to make it three wide. And look who's in the mix. The seven of Justin Allgaier almost back to the top five. Right down the center. <laughs> we talked about the fire. Oh, Sheldon should... Creed goes around. Caution number nine. The question was, who is in the lead at the time of the caution? That's a great question. Yeah, most importantly, who was in the lead at the last loop? 
That's right. what I was going to say. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the last scoring loop. Yeah. You drivers, sometimes you're like, I swear I was leading. And it's like, well, we go to that last scoring loop. I hate those last yeah. scoring loops. <laughs> Always I never went out on go. those deals. <laughs> Sheldon Creed was running eighth. Let's see what happened here. Looks to me like the left rear tire is already flat. Yeah. Maybe there was contact earlier. Everybody does a great job. Wow. Look at the six car right there. Does a great job not not hitting him. But you can see the left rear tire is yeah, just flat. completely flat right there. And a lot of times there was probably contact somewhere before that to uh, to cut that tire down. Here's what's tough. You come down and get tires, but but you don't have any. So you just put on you know some stickers from earlier in the race. I mean. He hates that he spun from eight. He he really hates that he's not going to be able to do much on those odd, older tires the rest of the race with no track position. Yeah, that's a real dagger for sure. It's hard to recover from that. Under caution, we'll take a break. 50 laps remaining. Sammy Smith scored as the race leader. Kyle Busch, Austin Hill, John Hunter, Nemechek, Justin Allgaier, the top five. There's a thin line in the NASCAR Xfinity Series between winning and losing, between being the future and being past, between headlines and tailspins, between making history and being it, between the sweet taste of victory and the fumes of defeat. In the NASCAR Xfinity Series, there's a thin line between being a name they know and being a name they'll never forget. situation. How did you get here? Your character's in our video game. Video game? Yeah, it's what we do with Xfinity 10G. It's like, you know, the best network imaginable. What the heck is that? Those are the bad guys. Are they friendly? The 10G network, only from Xfinity. One giant leap for mankind. Imagine yourself in a new Toyota. Yeah. Sick. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Did you know that every new Toyota comes with Toyota Care? A two year or 25,000 mile maintenance plan and roadside assistance. That's the value you can expect from Toyota. Ready, set, go get your Toyota today. Toyota, let's go places. I need to try it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we race on the weekends and during the week, it's all about NASCAR Race Hub on FS1, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Looking forward to Monday, David Reagan, America's Crew Chief Larry McReynolds, and Kevin, you're coming in on Thursday. Yeah, I just want to see what my, my character looks like because you look pretty tough. Yeah, I look tough. I look tough. Yeah. I play a strong game when I'm a cartoon character. Yep. <laughs> you're in Thursday with Caitlin Vinci and our old buddy Andy Petrie. It's going to be fun. I can't wait. It is great, though. I, I got to say. It's awesome when you guys will come into the studio. You don't get this really anywhere else in sports where you're fresh out of the race car, not just doing a broadcast on the weekend like this, but to then come in during the week and, and break it down and give the insights. It's something you just don't get it really anywhere else. Yeah, you think about it, any other sport, do you see the players that are playing today doing TV? That's something pretty cool that a sport does, right? We're, we're racing tomorrow. We just got off the racetrack, and here we are talking about the race that's pretty neat we don't see it anywhere you need those reps though because you're coming full time so we need to get you i definitely need the reps as, as many chances in front of the camera as we can get you you know what i mean well I, I i'm looking i'm looking forward to next year but i'm looking forward to also having some 
some time behind the wheel this year to be able to relate to you guys what's what's actually going on. Well, and, and you leave and it, it leave the race car and it does open the door for a sponsor for, for someone. So so there's this question out there of you know who's going to take over and represent Bush. And you know Jeffrey Earnhardt made a, a great play saying <laughs> that is a great play. You need to be on my car. I love that. That is a man's man right there. That is unbelievable. Look at Look that. At that. Jeez. I'm not getting in that water or holding that fish. I'm sure he doesn't fear the speed of a race car, but if, if you don't fear that, and, and then Kyle Busch put his hat in the ring, said, why not me? I mean, it just kind of matches up. It does. It does kind of match up. Oh. We'll, we'll see how it spelling. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they planned it. All right, so uh, one of the storylines to watch here in the last 45 laps or so, Justin Allgaier, who lost all that track position after staying out to win stage two. He's back up to fifth now, Josh. Yeah, and they've been talking over the radio over who should get the credit to stay out and get that stage win. I'll well, take a listen to what they had to say. Both of you making me look good today. Technically, I made the call to stay out, too, so um, hopefully I'm making myself look good. Yeah, I led you to it, though. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. <laughs> well, I know he's going to go back and watch this broadcast. And he, if he does win this race, he's going to be like, ah, those guys have no clue what they're talking about. <laughs> 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 Got to love a confident driver, though. Well, absolutely, yeah. I mean, he said he's doing the whole thing right there. He's calling the race. He's... Driving the car. Coleman, what do you think? Well, it's going to be interesting to see what Justin Algar do, <laughs> does on this restart. You know, I feel like he's the, the toughest competition for Sammy Smith for this win. Let's think back to the last time he was on equal strategy. He drove by on the outside of leader Cole Custer to take the win in the first stage. I think a good restart. If he can position himself somewhere around row, uh, row three on the restart, hopefully get to about third place after a lap or two, he could uh, give Sammy Smith a run for his money here. And that camera really, really tells us a lot about Coleman as he's talking. He's, a, he's like me. He's a handsy guy. <laughs> he's moving around, <laughs> telling a story. I love it. Now, we'll see more of that Thursday on Race Up because the camera's on, you know, pretty much all the time. In the booth, you know, you, you're up here moving around. We really don't get that perspective because I, we're watching the race. I really thought you were going to tell me something that was happening with Coleman on Thursday. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> What I really want, I really want the audio from when Joey spotted for Coleman. Oh, man. Coleman's a good race car driver. And Joey was his spotter at Hickory. And I, I, I think that would probably be very entertaining. Hey, I us. wish we recorded it. Coleman won the fall brawl at Hickory. And I think I was more excited about him winning that race than I was when we won here in Phoenix for the championship. I was screaming and yelling. I was high-fiving all the other spotters. They didn't really care about him winning as much as I did. I was still high five at him. We had a good time. All the families were there. It was fun. There are certain role reversals that, that work out. That's one, you know, I, I don't know which end of that I'd want to be on. I'd know? be interested to see if Coleman thinks Joey was a good spotter. But anyway, <laughs> spotters be working go. hard here. 44 to go. Final stage at Phoenix. I think one of the guys that we might have not talked about enough is that 20 car. Justin Allgaier has been coming through the pack, but the 20, like you said earlier, Adam, is a little bit of a sleeper. Well, and you know, you, you look at the top five, he's coming back from the restart violation. Kyle Bush had to start in the rear. We know how the seven team has played the strategy and all of them right there. Josh Berry is fifth right now. He's spun a couple of times today, so Bouncing back from tough times has been a theme in this race, no doubt. Algar has had a little bit of trouble taking off right here. It looks like his car was a little tighter than he probably would have liked. And, and he settles in right here. Uh, looks like sixth position, but he had a little bit of trouble taking off there. And we've talked about it throughout the day. It's, it's, you've got to get what you can on these restarts. This just helps you so much later on. Now, yeah, the seven has a good long run car and a car capable of winning, but he's going to have to use some tire trying to get around these guys, right? He's going to have to abuse his car pretty hard while Sammy Smith's out in clean air. You know, he, he's still pushing, but 
not in the same way, right? He's got clean air on the nose. He's getting clean air to his brakes. He's he's able to run his speed, not be super aggressive. Where the seven is pushing all he's got right now, trying to get by the cars in front of him. We mentioned Josh Berry. He's come back to run in the fifth position. Here's what they're saying. I got an idea. Is that a good one? Yeah, the, I'm going to turn on this red light that you use when it rains, and then, then people will see me. Yeah, good point. So what he's referring to, and, and you may have noticed the windshield wipers on the car, and obviously if you've been watching, it's something that, that you would, would draw your attention. And, you know, we got a wet weather package now. And any track a mile or less, with the exception of Dover and Bristol, you're going to have the setup in the car so you can race or at least run in the wet. So that's why you see the wiper, he refers to the red light, that you would have on the back of the car to indicate where everybody is visually uh, for someone racing in front of you. So that's what he's talking about in reference to the red light. Well, I hope I'm watching the first time that all that happens. <laughs> <laughs> Personally. So you hope it doesn't happen this year, huh? <laughs> yeah. Me I don't, too. I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't really know where else to go with that, Adam. <laughs> I guess his windshield wiper looks good. Well, you, and you, know, mud, mud you flap, can wean yourself off of the political correctness as we go throughout the year, right? I think so. <laughs> You'll find out next week in the inspection line. <laughs> So how about the race, guys? <laughs> what do you think about that? Yeah. Uh, 38 laps to go. <laughs> I mean, Josh Berry has passed the 21 car. <laughs> yeah, Sammy Smith led laps a couple of weeks ago in Fontana and then had a restart where things didn't go his way. Ended up finishing 19th. Last week was good again, but had a problem getting to pit road under green, was speeding, ends up 17th. Today he's led 55 laps, and it's a real coming out party for the driver uh, out of Iowa that, that's been so impressive with speed, just unable to put it all together. But today he is really doing some positive things. And I feel like he's become better every restart. And, you know, the last restart he just went in, knew where he wanted to be, took the lead, and, and is driving off. So he's progressed as the day has gone on. So he's learning and gotten better. He's definitely the smarter. He saw that move right before the last caution. He was three wide for the lead. He, he chose to go right down the gut, right down the center of uh, John Hunter and, and uh, Kyle Busch. That was a pretty big move. On board Riley Hurst. Clear, clear. Get your marks now. Get to your bottom. We talked about his consistency. He's been the, the top four at every race so far in 2023. A couple of positions in front of his teammate right now, trying to go four for four in that category. And it would be his seventh consecutive top ten dating to last year, which would be a personal best for the driver from Las Vegas. And I feel like Daniel Hemrick's car is, it really it hasn't looked very good all day, other than you know, that they've done a great job on pit road. He's done a great job on the restarts. And, and that's kind of what you have to do to minimize the damage when, you, when your car is not done good. But I think that they have overachieved in, in those two departments. And Daniel has just done what he can do with the car that he described as very loose earlier. I don't know where it's still at, but it's obviously still not where he wants it. Yeah, and, and you said it, Kevin. He's done a great job at the details. The details are, are what help you survive. But when you get a long run, that's when it's a telltale sign of where you're really at. Oh, oh. man. Jeb Burton, 27, the white 02 that made contact with him. That's Kyle Weatherman. Yeah, Kyle just, he got it in there a little too straight, and then he got to the bottom of the corner, and the car just washed up in the gym. Yeah, they were racing just outside the top 15. You see the two there. He was, you know, he was, he spun out. He's got scuffs on, older tires that, well, maybe older than everybody else's tires still. Uh, he, he, you know, you put on your last set of tires, you spin out, you got nothing left but old scuffs, but he's hanging on. He's 22nd, top five with 32 to go. Smith, Nemechek, Bush, Barry, Austin Hill. We're side by side on FS1. America's falling in love with these four farmers. This really hit me in my heart like this is real. And so are these city women. The man in a belt buckle and cowboy hat is so sexy. Wednesday, the ladies head to the farms. What do we think of Oklahoma? It looks very abandoned. Things get real. Ah, uh, 
She's got me messed up. So decisions must be made. I reckon it's that time. This is not fun for me, and it's not easy for me. Farmer Wants a Wife, all new Wednesday on Fox. Monday morning, when they ask, what'd you do this weekend? Tell them everything. NASCAR returns to Atlanta Motor Speedway for the Ann Better Health 400 weekend. Three races, two days, one nonstop party. You gotta be here. Get your tickets now at AtlantaMotorSpeedway.com. It's orientation day. Welcome to the team. Mm -hmm. race. I like this team. Be part of something greater. Toyota. Let's go places. I need to try it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, KFC's double down is back? Double down, double, double, double down. Chicken, chicken, bacon, chicken, chicken, cheese. Double down, double, double, double down. Buy a double down on the KFC Africa March 18th for early beta access to Diablo 4. History says there will be a caution in the final 30 laps of the race. The final 35 laps here for the last five races have produced a yellow. Make it five of the last six because we have our 10th caution of the day, and we'll see if we can figure out what happened. Hard to see in the distance, but it was Anthony Alfredo. Just lost it. Yep. Yeah. Spun out quick, too. Yeah, it looked like it just snapped on him a little bit, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, Joey and I were just talking about how a lot of the cars look loose into the corner. I don't think the left rear tire is flat. Nope. No, it looks okay. He just spun out. Well, I don't want to talk about ifs and buts, but if you saved tires last time, you could have <laughs> put them on right now, and you could have been a hero. Uh, but nobody God. wanted to do that. Nope, nope. Just, so just no tires you, left. Just in case you forgot, I said earlier that... I told you so. <laughs> hey, you know, this restart is, is going to be fun because you have teammates running 1-2, Sammy Smith, and then John Hunter Nemechek. And we've talked about the challenges today for that 20 team, but boy, have they battled through the rough times. And it all began this morning. Long day for Xfinity teams. Practice qualifying... And that was Weber that goes high in the 66. Nemechek nowhere to go, wrinkles up the front end. So they kind of had to make their own decal, reminding everyone it is a Toyota Supra. Leading the race in control, restart violation for going below that yellow line. But the pass three stays on the lead lap, Kevin. Yeah, that's that's a that's a major win right there. And, and I'm, for, for me, I, I love the fact that they battled back through the field, through the adversity. These are championship style moments. And when when we fire off on this restart here, I feel like these are the two best cars on the restart to make turns one and two the best uh, possible corner. Uh, I feel like these two cars fire off the wells the best. So we'll see what happens with that. Regan, what do you have on the 20? Well, Kevin, keep an eye on John Hunter Nemechek. When we get back going here, about 15 laps ago on the last restart, once they realized they weren't going to catch Sammy Smith and that he was driving away at that moment, they kind of told him to save what he could in the event that we did get this late race caution like this. So maybe just a little bit left there for him if he was able to save some of those tires to maybe catch up to his teammate there. That car, just a little bit tight center and free off the corners all day long. They finally got the center good. He said, I can deal with the free off as long as the center is good. One other thing he's been dealing with, some brake shake on that car under these yellows yeah and the brake shake is from the the brakes being too cold right. I, don't, I don't know when the brake shake started but a lot of times you have to drive them into the corner hard enough to uh, to get the brakes hot so if if he was saving Joey what would he be doing to, to save under under those laps well I think uh, that one of the big things is lift early right get your foot off the brake pedal roll be smooth just knock it down a little bit on the speed knob and, and, and that'll help you save a little bit of tire but most likely I'd say the 18 car is doing the same thing out front and probably managing the gap a little bit as well. I think right now, if I'm John Hunter Nemechek, 
it's all or nothing on this restart. It, this is your chance to win. If he can get to the lead, maybe he has enough clean air to make the difference to stay in front of the 18 car of Sammy Smith. It's all about this next restart. If he can get in front of him, that's what it's going to be all about. And don't think for a second, just because they're teammates, they're not going to race each other hard. These two young guys racing for their careers, it's going to get big. I think they're going to race each other really, really hard to try to get that clean air. We're going to have 24 or so to go. It's coming down to this restart. They went at it pretty hard a couple of weeks ago in Fontana. Some of that was was working together to get debris off the front end of the car, but but they did race each other pretty hard there. Here's the choose. Smith low, Nemechek up high. And oh yeah, Kyle Busch is third. You think and he'll he, make a play here on this restart? Uh, we've already seen him go three wide to the bottom, way down there. Yeah, and I was a, I was a a little bit surprised that he that he picked the bottom because he's done everything on the top. But I think probably what you're saying, he's thinking, okay, I can get to the bottom of Sammy Smith and put him in a vulnerable position in the dog leg as we go to the bottom by getting a better restart. The he wild might think that they all wash up the racetrack and, yeah. and the seats that, are going to part for him. And the wild card that we haven't really seen up in the front is Josh Berry, right? And he, we know his car must be pretty good. He's passed the field. I guess this is the third time he's gone gone through the field. So it'll be <laughs> interesting to see what his car will do firing off. We know he's aggressive to, to make a move. Barry lining up uh, in the second row outside is the wild card, and the wild man is behind him. Chandler Smith, another one to watch. The 16, the, the rookie has been so, so fun on these restarts. It's going to get big. 24 laps to go. Time to run to the checkers in Phoenix. There goes Kyle. That's what we talked about. Let's see how it turns out down here. Three wide. Turns one and two. Austin oh. Hill digging down low. Nemechek in the wall. We knew he was going to run it hard. That's going to take him out of contention. I thought Kyle Busch was going to get there. Chandler Smith, Justin Allgaier with contact. They stay side by side for the lead. And that's exactly what Sammy Smith wanted to see. Able to clear in front of the 10. His toughest competition, which I think was a 20, is in the fence and knocked out here, fell back really far. How much has Sammy Smith grown up today, racing Kyle Busch on restarts at a place like Phoenix and coming out on the positive side of it? Well, he's he's learned on every restart and he's gotten better on every single restart and he's just putting that to use. And here's John Hunter just sailing it down in the one, kind of all or nothing like we talked about as a cautious out, the seven. Big damage. 11th caution of the day. In the run of top tens, top fives, and top threes. Going to end for Justin Allgaier. Just could not put it together in this final stint of the race. Yeah, and what, whatever happened two restarts ago when that car, that car just would not fire off like it has the, the rest of the race. I don't know if the racetrack went through a swing or what happened, but he just did not fire off a couple restarts ago. And the same thing happened here, and he, now he's buried in the field and got tore up. Let's see what happened here, Kevin. Looks like uh, once again into turn three. This has been the issue corner a lot of times. Oh, man. Brandon Jones. That was the first hit. Oh, and it, it's not over yet. Oh. Yeah, and that was just a just a chain of events there, kind of one of those racing deals where the nine got in the corner right here, got into the back of him just a little bit. Yep. The competition meeting at Junior Motorsports it's is going to be, be entertaining. entertaining this yeah, this week. is a two of them. Yeah, it's definitely going to be entertaining because the one got one into of the eight. eight. Yeah. Nine into the seven. A lot, of, a lot of combo shots happening here. But but I ask you off the very top of the broadcast today, Joey, how aggressive are things going to get on track? And we're finding out 11 cautions and some race cars that are really beat up now. Well, you think it's you think it's been aggressive to this point. What are we? We're <laughs> All coming bets to, are off we're, now, we're right? Coming 20 to 20 to laps to go. <laughs> I mean, a lot of that is just there's so much going on for everyone around there. You might not know if you're two wide, three wide, four wide, because there's so many things going on. That just makes it tricky I think from exiting the corner 
Kaz Grahl has brought that Toyota to pit road, but you see where he's at with the heart rate. And I mean, it's just down now about where it was during the pace laps prior to the race today. We've seen it you know, spike up around 160 a couple of times on those restarts and when he's racing in and around traffic. And there goes Allgaier out of the car, done for the day. I mean, for Allgaier, I mean, obviously a bittersweet day, right? He, he still got 20 regular season points, which is, is something, right? He got, what's more important, two playoff points. So he's now, like, yes, he's dejected right now, and he's got to walk to the infield care center, and that, that stinks. But now he's mad. there's some positives. Yeah, I, I don't blame him for yeah. being mad, but there's, on the way home tonight, he may think about it and say, well, we still got two playoff points. That's going to carry all the way through the playoffs. Back here. All the yeah. way through. So not that's a why total loss. That's, that's why he did it. It protects you. Because if he didn't do that, if he didn't get those two playoff points and still wrecked, well, then you got nothing. And this is a race team. I mean, they feel confident they're going to win races. And even though they haven't won yet, when you kind of have in your mind, I'm going to go out and win, it allows you to make some plays like they did today and, and be aggressive with the strategy and take what the race will give to you. Well, they played it as confidently as you could possibly play it with <laughs> staying out, taking the stage wins, and having the confidence that they could drive back through the field and, and, and still contend for that win. Almost got there. 19 to go. We said it. The best is yet to come. It's been some kind of afternoon here in Phoenix. So this is uh, the young 18-year-old Leland Honeyman. Lost the bumper, making his Xfinity debut, driving for Alpha Prime. One of the 11 cautions. This one for Debris. Joe Graff Jr. got a piece of the action in the 38. That eight car, I feel like he's been sideways more today than he's been in a straight line. Talk, Kevin, about the pit stop woes for Cole Custer. Started on the pole. And here's Barry again, this time off the nose of his teammate, Sam Mayer. The sweep for Justin Allgaier winning stage one and stage two. The seven led only 20 laps today, but gets a pair of stage victories. Sheldon Creed won here in the truck series, had the tire go down here and goes around early portion of the final stage. And what has us under this, the 11th caution, Brandon Jones, Justin Allgaier, Kaz Grala, Brett Moffitt was there. And all of this sets us up for another restart where 18-year-old Sammy Smith is going to have to figure it out again. One more time with our Toyota onboard camera. Lots going on inside the car there. I mean, 17 to go. The, the, are you a sitting duck a little bit if you're Sammy Smith? Because I feel like Kyle Busch has thrown so much at you, and, and yet you know he's got more cards to play. And, and Kyle, no doubt, is, is making some observations on how Sammy is handling these situations. If, if you're a young guy, what's your feel here with someone like Kyle Busch starting up front with you? For me, I'm telling him that just get yourself to turn one because you have the best car. If you can just get there without getting hit in the door or tearing something up. If, if they get under you, do exactly what he did. He showed a lot of maturity earlier. Kyle got underneath him. He got to the corner. He got himself in a good position. He got a good run through the corner, and he took the lead back. But you know that they're going to try to dive low. You know that they're going to try to go high. Just get yourself set up so that you can get through the middle of the corner and off the corner solid. Coleman? That's what I was going to come to Kevin and then Joey and ask him here. Where would you rather have Kyle? Would you rather have him to your inside and race him off a two? Or would you rather do what you just did? We know statistically speaking, uh, old tire restarts lend a little bit more to the top in these Xfinity cars. What, what would you guys rather prefer it be to your inside or to his outside on the restart? Oh, man, I, well, here you go. He's taking the bottom. I like the bottom, right? I like the bottom. If he can get a good restart, he can shortcut it. Right. If he can keep himself from someone putting him three wide, if he can shortcut the dog leg, get into turn one, 
uh, it leaves the slide job available too, right? If you're on the bottom and, and, and you can almost clear him and just release the brake a little bit and get up in front of him, let him cross you. Then you're on the outside in the turn three. That's okay too. I, I just think it's a safer route, right? I, there's always a chance if you're on the outside, the guy washes up into you and takes you out. So at least I'm in control if I'm on the bottom. I, and I, I prefer that. I think it's going to launch. But I think it's going to launch better on the bottom too. Yeah. Uh, personally, I, and so, yeah, I, I, he's had a lot of experience with it today, and he's done a great job and, and, and become better at it each time that he goes into the corner. So now he just has to do it again. And young drivers have one here. You see the graphic. Sammy Smith would become the youngest to do it at age 18. Don't forget about Austin Hill on this restart too. He's right there. 15 to go. They ran him up the racetrack a little bit. He was a whole lane and a half off the bottom of the racetrack that time Sammy Smith was and he got himself a great restart. Austin Hill one back one lane up now. trying to move back. into the second position. Here comes Chandler Smith to the outside of the 21. The racing behind Kyle Busch and Sammy Smith. Kyle trying the top side. That's his only play here. I mean, he, he's kind of got a knife to a gunfight on this one. He, he's he's trying really hard to race with something that he doesn't quite have as, as much to race with him. But I love the effort that he's putting in here. And he's going to have a run off the corner here. Yeah, he's definitely doing better at it this time than he than he did the restarts before, but he's there. Maybe a little gas in the tank for Kyle Busch, who's won here 11 times. Nothing doing this time. 13 remaining. Smith shoots across the dog leg, and again, Kyle Busch takes the high side. That's Chandler Smith in third. And I think what, what Sammy Smith did that allowed Kyle to get that run. He went way down on the flat. I don't think he needed to do that. And that allowed Kyle to have a chance of passing him. And now Chandler Smith, there he is. It could be the Smith and Smith show. And Ryan Truex making a play. He's in the top five running fourth right behind this duo. Chandler Smith to me has, and we touched on this um, with some of the reports earlier in the race, he has definitely been the biggest surprise. But his restarts have been very, very good. Every race we've gone to so far this year. And Kyle's managing a lot in the mirror right now, isn't he? Ryan Truex dogging him low, Chandler Smith up high, and all of this allowing Sammy Smith to pull away. His lead nearly a second with 11 remaining. And for the people at home, Ryan Truex, he does an amazing job every time he gets in his car because when you don't race every week to get the details and the, and the the last tenth and a half of speed out of these race cars is something that is really, really hard to do. So jumping in this race car for Ryan Truex, I just, I can't tell you how big of a deal it is for him to run up front. And I wish, I wish he had the opportunity to run more races because he has taken full advantage of this car last year and today for sure. Hey, and, and you know what? He hasn't raced since July. He'll be back in that 19 car next week. That speaks to what you're talking about. For those of you looking for the World Baseball Classic game between the Dominican Republic and Venezuela, that game currently on FS2 and the Fox Sports app will get you there when we're done here in Phoenix. Ten to go for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Nine to go this time around. Sammy Smith leading his teammate Ryan Truex. Kyle Busch, who's won here 11 times, 102 times in his career, is third. Chandler Smith is fourth. And Riley Herbst, the final car inside the top five. John Hunter Nemechek has come back to sixth in that 20 car. And Sheldon Creed on the older tires is seventh. So many good stories in the top ten right now. And when you look at the drivers in the top five and how many wins they've produced in their career, it's a total of 102, and all of those <laughs> for Kyle Busch. Everyone else has a goose egg. That's an amazing stat. When you think about everyone but one, obviously, with Kyle. Has never gotten a top five in their life. They're all here to get their best career finish, no matter where they finish in the top five. I mean, this has just been such a great day of comebacks, and here are two of them, Sheldon Creed, John Hunter Nemechek. You know, it, it, the 18th, not really pulling that far away from Truex right now. It, it seems like it's steady at a half a second. 
Is that by design? Is he, is he just... I, I, I'm not comfortable with a half a second. Okay. I, I'd like to have a little bit more than that. So. But we know what happened last week, right? I mean, Chandler Smith in position, in position, and then all of a sudden... It went away quick. He lost it. Riley doing a great job, and, and like we talked about earlier, in order to, in order to learn how... In order to learn how to win these races, you have to run in the top five, and you have to learn how to race in the front of the pack. And that's what four of those five guys in the top five are doing, is learning how to win a race. Can't learn to win races if you run a 15th. Nope. There you see the gap. Joey mentioned yet. that half second. That's where it's been hanging the last four laps or so. Five remaining, Coleman. Keep an eye and keep an eye in turn two right here. Ryan Truex is very strong at getting this car rotated and putting power down. That's going to be the spot he's going to try to make his move. He's really good grip coming off of two. Mm. He's leaving black marks off the corner. He is giving it all that he has. Ryan Truex has never won, as we saw on the graphic. He's finished second twice, once at Dover, once here in 2019. He was driving for Junior Motorsports on that Saturday afternoon. The advantage almost six tenths of a second. We'll see three laps to go next time around for Sammy Smith, who's trying to close the deal. Yeah, it seems like he's just kind of stuck there at that half a second back. Uh, I mean, it's, it, that's one mistake away, though, right? Like, that, that's not a huge gap. Half a number less on entry, man. It's not entry, it's exit. Come on. Focus. The extra motivation from the spotter. You look at Sammy Smith, four tires underneath it on, on you know the one third part of the corner. I mean it's it's an interesting line. Oof. How much do you, do you want to know here about what's happening behind you if you're Sammy Smith and if you're the team? How much do you share with a young driver as he gets two to go this time? Well, you got everything. Gotta, yeah, you got to you got to feed him information and you got to try to help him keep his nerves calm so that you minimize the loss. You just want to minimize the loss of time. If you make a mistake or you, you know, you, you try a different line or whatever the case is, you don't want to lose a half a second. You want to lose a half a tenth. And, and that's really what you're trying to do is keep him focused on the things he needs to be focused on, not worrying about whether he's going to win this race. Side by side for third, Chandler Smith underneath Kyle Busch. White flag is waving in Phoenix. One lap to go, sponsored by Credit One Bank. One mile to victory for Sammy Smith. He's 18 years old, out of Johnston, Iowa. He's a high school senior. Same thing at three and four here. Fundamental three and four, no change. During the week, he's taking classes online. On the weekends, he's driving for Joe Gibbs Racing. Today, he gets an A+. Plus. Sammy Smith wins at Phoenix. Yes, yes. Thank you, guys. Awesome job today, bud. You are the man. That was great. This is going to be a fun year, bud. Saw Jeff Mendering on the box. One here 2020 with Brandon Jones. Today, he leads Sammy Smith to victory lane for the first time in his career. There's a look at Jeff. Longtime crew chief over at Joe Gibbs Racing. Nothing like your first win, right? And, and, and doing it in that kind of fashion, right? I mean, a lot of restarts, pressure's on, some of the best right behind you. That's a tricky place to be, and you didn't let the pressure get to him. And it's been coming for a couple weeks. You know, I think as, as we've gone through the beginning of part of this season, you've really been able to see the speed and things that they have in their race car. And he's raced up in the front, and he's learned every week. And, and it's just like today, he learned every restart, and he got better and better and better through turns one and two. Two weeks ago in Fontana, he had never seen the track, got no practice, no qualifying, led laps. Last week, had never been to Vegas, gets 20 minutes of practice, and goes out and is a real player. Comes to Phoenix today where he raced in November. The experience paid off, and Sammy Smith has got career win number one in his 13th start. And for Joe Gibbs Racing, it's their 16th win here at the Desert Mile. Well, the other thing you'll learn about Sammy Smith, if you watch that burnout, he's won a lot before because he did a heck of a burnout right there. It's not his first time doing a burnout. He's won a lot of arc races. Ryan Truex matches his career best second. Sheldon Creed comes back to finish third. Herbst and Smith complete the top five. Kyle Busch, big save, final lap. 
He ended up ninth today. You get the feeling? It's the first of many. Absolutely. Welcome to the club, Sammy Smith. You're a winner in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Let's hear from him, Josh. And Sammy Smith, now the youngest Xfinity Series winner here at Phoenix. A dominant victory as he celebrates with the team, a kid that's still in high school and gets it done. Sammy, you thought about this moment, I'm sure, a number of times. What does it mean to be in victory lane now in the Xfinity Series? Yeah, it's amazing. It's a dream come true. Just thanks to Pilot Flying J, uh, PMC, Old State Peterbilt Group, Render Group, Toyota, all the guys on the JGR team for giving me this opportunity. It's awesome. Thanks and congratulations. What a day for Sammy Smith. You know, Kyle's won a lot of races. Kyle Busch has won a lot of races driving for Joe Gibbs Racing. Eventful ride, final lap. You know, these guys are racing hard. Really, the whole last, since the last restart, crossing each other up. You see Kyle go back down to the bottom. I think this is where it's going to get interesting. Look at that. Pedal, pedal, pedal. Oh, my goodness. It's Chandler Smith in the 16, who, oh, by the way, finished fifth and has now got his third consecutive top oh. five finish, another rookie. He's really How about Ryan Truex, Regan? Well, I mean, that Ryan Truex matching his career best finish. You had to battle through that one today. At one point, you guys were up front, and the next thing you look up, you guys are kind of in the middle of the pack at the end of the race, so you got it going when it counted. Yeah, we... Uh, I thought we were good at the start. Man, I think the track just changed a lot more than I expected it to. That long run, we were we were really bad. I was just hanging on. Um, but Jason and these guys let me complain on the radio and uh, made the right adjustment. So that was a good restart at the end. Uh, I'm glad I could at least try to make it exciting. Um, congrats to Sammy. He was just, I think, class in the field all day. Uh, his car just looks so good. Can really kind of do whatever he wanted. but. Just thankful to be here. Uh, thanks to Toyota Genuine Parts. Um, it was as fast as Xfinity 10G, but I think Sammy's is just a little bit faster. Um, so try again next time. Thanks, Ryan. Regan, we say in the NASCAR Xfinity Series, names are made here. And a superstar was born today. Yeah, it's impressive that Sammy Smith won, led nearly 100 laps. But let's go back to all the restarts because of so many cautions. And he's holding off Kyle Busch. He saw everything, had it all thrown at him, delivers each and every time, Kevin. Well, I love the fact that he learned on the fly right there. He did a pretty good job getting going. And, and I think as, as you go through everything that he's done in the past with the ARCA races and leading those races and all the positions that he's been in over the last a uh, couple weeks with being up in the front of the pack. He's obviously learned a lot and put himself in position to win. And today he just closed the deal and he did it under a lot of pressure. Absolutely. A lot of natural talent. We've seen that. But also his ability to learn. That's what I saw today is that he's able to kind of see things happen, make a mistake every now and again. That's okay. That's how you learn. And he's able to apply it quickly. He doesn't have to get out of the car and have someone teach him what he did wrong. I think he figures it out really, really quick, applies it, and wins the race. How about this rookie class? You got Sammy Smith who wins, and I mentioned it. Chandler Smith, three consecutive top five finishes. We're going to be saying the name Smith a whole lot in 2023 because both these young drivers have delivered. Guys, good luck to you tomorrow sharing row eight when we go green here at Phoenix. Kevin, you're going for how many wins? Is it 10 tomorrow? I think it's 10. <laughs> uh oh. Uh, <laughs> Whatever. <yeah. laughs> we got the Gator Nationals at noon, followed by coverage on race day, and then it's over to Fox for the race. Congratulations, Sammy Smith. You're a winner. It's time for baseball on FS1.